In just over 10 years, there were four Argonaut coaches. Leo Cahill at the helm of the winning Argos. Then disaster. McQuay fumbles in the 71 Grey Cup game. It was the beginning of Leo's end. And it got worse. John Roach fired. Also fired. Canadian coach Russ Jackson. And Bob Shaw fired by Argos in the spring of 67. Three of these former Argo coaches are with us tonight as we kick off the 1977 CFL season. CBC presents Canadian Professional Football, brought to you by Canadian Pacific, working for Canadians in resource development, manufacturing and transportation. KTEL International, specialists in household and leisure time products. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, only the athletes are closer to the action. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom McKee, and welcome to the earliest start ever for the Canadian Football League here on this July the 12th. Let us talk to the head coach of the Tiger Cats, Bob Shaw. The fact that this is the earliest start, did that pose any particular problems in getting this team ready? Not particularly, uh, other than the heat. Uh, it's been quite hot uh, recently. Uh, this is always a somewhat of a problem. Uh, was cooler earlier during training camp and now it uh, heats up and uh, uh, opening with the Toronto Argonauts it's always hot. You're ready to tear this club apart? Well I am uh, now uh, I just hope that the uh, players are. And Leo if those players or the cats are ready you're in for a tussle. No question about it Tom they got a real good football team and uh, I'd feel pretty comfortable coming over here after the way we played against Ottawa had we been well but uh, we got a dogfight ahead of us, and we just got to play exceptionally good football to win this game. Do you feel uh, a little strange coming back here? They sort of sang you off the field when you left the CFL some time ago? Well, I've had a lot of time to think about that, Tom, and, uh, you know, it's predictable that when things go wrong, people get in a festive mood, and they'll do things like that. Uh, it's all in the spirit of the game. I, it's a little bit distracting, a little bit demoralizing when it's happening, but uh, we just got to rise above it and do the best we can. You wouldn't mind stuffing it down their throats, though? Well, it's always satisfying to win. I don't know about stuffing down their throats. Okay, Leo, thank you very much. Good luck to you and the Argonauts. Those are two of the former coaches of Toronto Argonauts who we have involved in this game. Leo returning, of course. The other one is Russ Jackson, who we are happy to announce, joined us once again in the broadcast booth, a victim of circumstance with the Toronto Argonauts, the circumstance being that the Argonaut management did not live up to the promises in their five-year program. Russ wanted five years to come up with a winner. He was fired after two. And so he's back with us, and he joins our veteran play-by-play -play broadcaster, Don Chevrier. We'll go to the broadcast booth in just a moment. CBC Saturday. The Saturday Night Movies presents Wuthering Heights. Oh, Heathcliff, you must not do this villainous thing. She hasn't harmed you. You have. Then punish me. I'm going to. When I take her in my arms, when I kiss her, when I promise her life and happiness. Oh, Heathcliff, if there's anything human left in you, don't do this. Laurence Olivier and Merle Oberon star in Wuthering Heights, Saturday at 8.30. Tires, sir? Oh, just ordinary tires. Sorry, sir, we don't have just ordinary tires. We only have Michelin. Okay, I'll take an ordinary Michelin. No. Why not? They don't make ordinary Michelin. They only make the best kind. Mm, costs a zillion dollars, bet ya. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Michelin. We only make the best kind, yet our price could be a nice surprise. The price is a nice surprise. And so is your helper. Well, first, a welcome back to Russ Jackson. Uh, for five years, Russ, you had this job, but you wore a different coat in those days, a red coat that no longer exists. Well, that's true, Don. I had the red coat for five years with you, and now we're back into the melon coat, and it's kind of nice. I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of nice to be back, too. Nice to have you aboard. The Argonauts have got the world's longest injured list as they start this season. The two most prominent are Corrigal 
and Granny Liggins, and of course John Harvey, suspended twice, was cut from this team, and of course is not starting tonight's game. That's true, Don, but I think defensively they can look after those problems with the Americans, but I, I think one of the biggest problems is Nick Bastai, who is geared to play offensive tackle for them, and he's not going to be able to go, and they're going to have to play Peter Sorensen in there, and he's going to be tested with Mike Samples playing defensive end, because I consider Mike one of the top defensive ends in the country. Ironically, on the Toronto team, only seven players who played that fateful last game that you were involved with last year when they missed the playoffs are in the starting lineup offensively or defensively. Injuries are a reason, but overall, the Argonauts have had many, many changes in 77. Well, this is one of the things. I think when a new coach comes into a ball club, they're definitely going to try and cut things down they're going to bring in the type of players they want to have and i think this is what leo has done and i think any coach would do that no matter what they say when they come i think basically they want to change and get their particular players with them well hamilton's got some changes too one of the most prominent for the tiger cats is veteran receiver mike eben cut by toronto in a somewhat surprising move he's joined hamilton he says in part he was cut because he supported russ jackson last year well mike what about that is that true it is to a great degree, I supported Russ Jackson because I felt he was trying to build a team over a, a longer period than the two years that he was given. It must have been quite a shock for you, though, when it did come through, the trade. Or it being cut? It being cut? No, not really. <laughs> Most of my teammates had been cut or traded, and uh, as I've said to other people, my marriage in Toronto was not a happy one, and uh, it wasn't a shock. If anything, it was a bit of a relief. I enjoy myself in Hamilton right now. And there was no question that you would come down the road? Not in my mind, and I was impressed with Hamilton last year, and I like what Coach Shaw had been doing, so I'm glad to be here. Okay, Mike Even, have a good year. Now let's go back to the broadcast booth and check in with Russ and Don. Ready now for the national anthem. Mr. Donald Dunn will sing it in the CFL season opener 77. Under the direction of Don Allen. Our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free, and stand on guard. Stand on guard for thee. Anthem from Hamilton. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. And now, Canada, the new Chevrolet. All right, now let's meet the officials for tonight's game. The referee is Lauren Woods of Ottawa. <coughs> Chuck Paul, Blair Shallow, Scott McBrien, and Floyd Cooper complete the officiating staff. There they are. A very warm night. This football game is underway here in Hamilton. Shaw receiving the opening kickoff and taking it back across the 20-yard line to the area of the 22, taken down by newcomer Paul Bennett for the Toronto Argonauts. So the Hamilton Tiger Cats took the ball. The Toronto Argonauts chose the win here. And this happened the last time the Argonauts played here in that final scheduled game, November 7, 1976. Also, Montreal took the first quarter win. Both those teams lost the key games ending the home season for Hamilton. The quarterback is Jimmy Jones, the veteran acquired a year ago from the Montreal Alouettes. Jimmy Edwards in the backfield. Harrison's in there as a starter. 
This is Edwards sweeping outside across the 25-yard line. He'll have about six. Taken down by... Now we'll get the tackler for you. Defensive end Cornelius Walker. Leo Cahill, of course, back in Hamilton, the place for us that I think uh, a lot of Argonaut coaches hate to come to. Don, that's something that you have to get over. I know when we were in Ottawa, we hated to come here as well. So it, it's one of those things that a good football club like Hamilton, whenever you're coaching the team coming in to play them, you're a little wary of it. You know you've got a battle in your hands. This is second down. They've got about four to go. Oddly enough, Toronto requested the opening game in Hamilton to avoid a last scheduled game with all the bad luck they've had in the past this year. Here is Harrison. He will not get the first down. Contained around the 30-yard line by Ward Smith. So Bill Harrison, number 36, in the backfield with Jimmy Edwards after two running plays, leaves them short by a couple. Well, that's an example, Don, of uh, putting Billy in there. I know I talked to Bob Shaw today, and he was saying that John Kinch, number 27, whom we expected might start tonight, is much more of a fullback type. He feels that Harrison is more of a running back type, and you've got to have that big person in there. They had Angelo Santusi last year, and he did a good job for them on those short yardage situations because when those linebackers are plugging on those short yardage situations, you've got to have a little size to get that yardage. Santucci now with Edmonton. This is putter Ken Clark, who led the East in 1976. Calvin Kirk and Paul Bennett back to receive. He will kick into that wind, a good kick. Moving up forward is Kirk, he lost the football. It's a free ball. Kirk picks it up back at the 25-yard line. That's all for him. Berryman, number 31, was in there. John Martini is sitting on the tackle for Hamilton as the Thai Cats come up gunning against the Argonauts as Kirk lost the football. Well, that wind is going to be a factor, and Calvin Kirk, that ball was almost like a ball hit off a baseball bat. It seemed to drop just as he went to field it, and he just never did get the handle of it, and it turned out to be a 55-yard kick with very little run back. Here's a fast starting play for the Toronto Argonauts. Chuck Elliott, quarterback. McGraw reaches the line of scrimmage and gets no further, maybe half a yard. Now, he's playing where John Harvey was to have played. Richard Holmes, who's on the injured list, is the other possible starting back. Donnie McGraw was cut, actually, two weeks ago and brought back to start this season opener for Toronto. He's in the backfield with Neil Lumsden, the veteran number 32. That is in his second year, a holdover. He becomes a veteran of the Argonauts. Dennis Franklin, nine. Tony Hill are the receivers with Calvin Kirk, number 14, who spreads left down. Second down and nine, Toronto. Ely over the head of his intended receiver. It was Donnie McGraw way up at the 45-yard line. The Argonauts go to third and nine and will give the ball up. Well, the Argonauts coming out on that quick count on both those plays. They've been doing this in their last ball game when they did finally win a ball game against the Montreal Alouettes, they almost came out continuously on quick counts, and we saw there Chuck Ealy's statistics, but that time he had McGraw coming out of the backfield wide open. The Hamilton Tiger Cats had a three-man rush, and they just happened to overthrow the ball because it should have been a completion. Well, on the top of your screen is Dave Shaw. At the bottom, Jimmy Edwards back to receive this kick, aided by a win. It is not a good kick with the win by Andrew Zitchin. Gets a bounce around the 45. Dave Shaw is surrounded immediately at the Hamilton 43-yard line. Gene Clark the lead tackler in there for the Toronto Argonauts. Clark, who uh, spent last season singing national anthems, was on the injured list in Toronto. And I'm not being facetious, he indeed did open a couple of games singing the anthem at Exhibition Stadium. He's got quite a voice, too, Don. He did a pretty good job. Sure we would did. rather have had him out there playing offensive guard, but he had quite a leg problem all through the entire season last year. First down, Hamilton. The veteran Terry Evans in his wide left. Mike Even on the right side. Two veteran Canadian receivers for this Hamilton offensive team. This is Jimmy Edwards, the exciting back of 1976. This time, good for two yards at the Hamilton 45 in the grasp of Wayne Smith. Of course, Smith, the former Ottawa Rough Rider All-Star and BC Lion, came to Toronto in a recent trade. Argonauts would hope to have two Canadian defensive ends in Smith and Jim Corrigal. As we said, Corrigal is missing this game with a leg injury, as is the veteran Granville Ligon. Mike even wide right. Evans should left for second and eight. Edwards in motion across the line. Deep for Harris at the Toronto 27-yard line. Ward Smith holds him down. A good catch on the run by Mike Harris. 
Call on second and long yardage situations. They like to go to Mike Harris, and he actually ran his favorite pattern. He ran a corner route here. Gordy Knowlton should have given him a good shot as he came down there. And as he came down there, he did the corner route, and actually the ball was thrown over his wrong shoulder. And as it came out there, he makes a 38-yard gain out of it. But that's his favorite pass pattern. You'll watch here, Russ, where he was kicked right in the stomach. Ward Smith, the defensive back, if you can see it. All right, we'll get back to it in just a moment from Hamilton. Hello, I'm Red Sovine, and this is a great new album from KTEL. Moving on. KTEL, moving on. 24 super hits, original stars, Alabama. Hank Snow. You were flying too high for my little old sky, so I'm moving on. Dave Dudley. Be an old CB. Johnny Cash. The train of love's a coming. Warner Mac. Eddie Big Price and C.W. McCall. This here's a rubber duck, and I'm about to put the hammer down. Red Sovai, Clintus Maggard, Stonewall Jackson, Billy Grammer, and El Reed. I like the girl wearing nothing but a smile and a towel in the picture on the billboard. Henson Cargo, Jerry Lee Lewis, Spot King, and Skeeter Davis. Oh, no. KTEL's Moving On is truly a great album, and I sure do hope you'll get one. Just tell them old Red sent you. Moving On, $5.99 from KTEL, tape $6.99. Available at Woolco, Woolworth, Zellers, Metropolitan Towers, Sam the Record Man, Gambles and the Clouds. Also at the Bay, Woodward's and Eaton's. On that last pass play to Mike Harris, we'll see as Ward Smith tackled him, he gets the shoe right up in the pit of the stomach. As he goes down here now, and he gets the wind knocked out of him, fortunately he's out of the ball game now, but okay, he walks off under his own steam. And Wayne Allison, number 12, is replacing him for at least one play. But that's Hamilton's favorite pass play going to Harris on those second down situations. Hamilton with a first down on Harris's long gain of the 27-yard line. I goes maybe offside. Here's Jimmy Edwards. He's cut down after getting maybe a yard. The presence of Allison is the only familiar sight from 1976 in Toronto. Jim Marshall from Saskatchewan and Lauren Richardson from Saskatchewan. And newcomers Ward Smith, who started the game, Paul Bennett and Eric Harris. Now Wayne Allison is the only holdover back because of injury in this sequence. Two flags are down. Referee Lauren Woods from Ottawa. Five and up 15 because one's after the whistle. There were two penalties Toronto. offside against Toronto and unnecessary roughness also against Toronto. The Tiger Cats will be going halfway to the goal line. Well, there's Bob Shaw, and he's certainly happy right now with this offense because with Toronto taking that wind advantage in this first quarter, it's Hamilton Ball Club, the first time they got their hands on the ball after that first offensive series, is really moving the ball well, and they're into the 11-yard line now after those dual penalties against the Argonauts. This drive started Russ upon receipt of a punt of the 43-yard line, the key play of the long gainer on the pass to Mike Harris. Mike Eba, number nine, goes wide right, and on the left spread out is Terry Evanson. Harrison and Edwards lined up behind quarterback Jimmy Jones. Out to Edwards. He's losing ground. And he's finally taken down heavily around the 13-yard line. He may lose a yard. Lauren Richardson, the ex-Saskatchewan Rough Rider All-Star, forced him out of bounds there. A good play by Ron Fox, number 78, playing that defensive linebacker spot. He made him go wide. He forced the offensive guard and got him out wide there and made it easy for the defensive back to come up and make the tackle. Russ, we have an official injured on the sidelines of the 13-yard line. In that pileup with Edwards being forced out, here's how it happened. Well, in slow-mo, we see them going out here, and the official's going to get caught in there. And number 62, he Comet Burley, who came across the pile, seemed to knock the leg out from underneath the official. And on this artificial turf, if you've got that leg planted a little too much, you can get quite a serious ankle injury. And this seems to be the problem. He seems to be in a lot of pain, and there seems to be a problem with the ankle or knee area. Looks to be Scott McBrien, the field judge. And as you see, they're administering first aid to him right there. Well, it's a rarity in football, and it does happen. And, of course, a standby official is always on duty for just such a circumstance here. Very early in this game, McBrien has been hurt. They've played four and a half minutes with the Tiger Cats on the march. And now the first aid corps, the St. John's Ambulance crew, is moving in. 
with a stretcher, which indeed is a very ominous sign. We really hope you're not injured seriously. A reminder of the Equestrian Grand Prix this Sunday from Beaumont, Quebec. Tom McKee with Gordon Atkinson and Kelly Hodge will bring it to you. Check your local listings for the time in your area from Beaumont, Quebec this Sunday on CBC Television. There's the injured official, Scott McBrien from Toronto. I think they're trying to transfer him now to a stretcher lying adjacent to where he has fallen around the 13-yard line of the Toronto Argonaut. Well, he's right near that Argonaut bench, and the Argonaut training staff was there in a hurry. I know Dr. Joba is right there with him, and certainly it looks like it could be a serious injury, and it, it was one of those unfortunate things that he commented Burley was clearing the pile because Edwards had gone down as he went over top of the pile. He just took the official's legs right up from underneath him. That's uh, as near as we can tell down here at the bench. That's a, either a broken ankle or certainly a broken leg. It could be up higher on the ankle. They're putting one of those plastic casts on it right now, which uh, they uh, blow in some air to protect it so it doesn't uh, doesn't move. It's tantamount to a splint, a little much better. Well, it definitely is Scott McBrien who is hurt down there, and we'll have to have an alternate official come in here now and uh, take over for him Scotty. early in this ball game. And certainly, Scotty, we're having yeah, a Scotty. stoppage in play here early in this first quarter as the Hamilton Club has moved to the Toronto Argonaut 13 yard line. They're putting a plastic splint on that leg. And they will be removing him to, uh, obviously, a uh, nearby hospital here in Hamilton. That's exactly what it is, a plastic splint. Uh, nice round from the, some of the Argo players here, round of applause, and from uh, some of the spectators in this immediate vicinity. How do you feel, Scott? Did it snap? Snapped, eh? Yeah, Scott said it snapped, so I guess he's the one who would know, wouldn't he? Well, what a shame, and he is on his way to hospital, the first injury of 1977, an official. Let's meet now some new players of the Toronto Argonauts on defense in 77. I'm Martin Richardson, defensive safety. Hi, James Marshall, cornerback. Eric Harris, cornerback. Paul Bennett, right side safety. Wayne Smith, right defensive end. Ray Nettles, middle linebacker. Well, the Argonauts are expected to have a formidable defense again in 1977. They acquired Nettles, of course, from the BC Lions in a trade. Wayne Smith, also from the British Columbia Lions. Eric Harris, one of their top recruits in the offseason before the 77 campaign started. There goes the ambulance now in the background, carrying the injured official, Mr. Scott McBrien from Toronto, the field judge. I'll just check how many officials are out there, Russ. It seems they're going to try to make do with uh, four. No, they have five oh, they have a out, man there. out there. We'll get his. Uh, there he is. There's the newcomer. Terry Finn, number 23, is replacing Scott McBrien. All right. Second down and 11 to go. Inside the 15 yard line of the Argonauts, here's Jones under pressure throwing deep for Edwards just beyond him. He was clear, but he was overthrown, and Jimmy Jones paid the price as three Argonauts came in and rocked him to the artificial turf. Well, the uh, Toronto defense was in a man-to-man -man situation there, and as Edwards came out of the backfield, Terry Evanson, who started as the wide receiver, turns into the inside, and he does a good job of screening here as Edwards comes to the outside, and the two Toronto defensive players run into each other. Terry runs over top of them, and Edwards is home free in the end zone, but Jones overthrows him. But it was a good job by Terry Evanson coming to the inside, forcing the Toronto defensive backs to really run into each other and take themselves out of the play. You know, one of the big knocks against Hamilton last year was the lack of a solid field goal kicker. They've got a new boy from the University of Windsor, Dave Pegg, in there. He'll try this from 20 yards out, and he's good on his first official CFL attempt to give the Hamilton Tiger Cats an early 3-0 lead here at Iverwind Stadium. They play five minutes and eight seconds of the first quarter of the first football game of the season. Don, that's something that can't happen with a young secondary out there that hasn't worked together a great deal. We had Jim Marshall and Paul Bennett who are playing together for the first time in a regular season game. They've had a few exhibition games together, but you've got to talk out there. You've got to know when you're playing man-to-man -man who is going to go in front of whom when you're crossing with each other to cover those receivers. And that time, they're both on the same plane, and they ran into each other and just knocked each other off. 
That's a good point. In time, they may gel, but in the early days of this season, all being newcomers, well, that's the price they sometimes have to pay, getting familiar with one another back there in the deep secondary for the Toronto Argonauts. We now are lining up to receive the kickoff. Kirk, who mishandled a punt earlier and then recovered it, is back at the five-yard line as the deep receiver for the Toronto Argonauts. Dave Pegg, who just kicked that field goal, is kicking off. A line drive along the ground, a bounder at the 35-yard line. Ron Fox picks it up, gets a rare chance to run with the football and brings it out to the 48-yard line. That's what those linebackers love. They love to pick that ball up and run, and everybody on the sideline and the coaches up top just say, I hope he hangs on to it. <laughs> he did, and he trots off with about an eight-yard run back. Craig Jensen, a Hamilton newcomer in the defensive secondary, brought him down as a member of that Ticant specialty team. All right, now from the 48-yard line, three-nothing Hamilton, about six minutes gone. Here's Chuck Ely, the starting quarterback, pitching to Donnie, quick draw McGraw. And he reaches the 54-yard line for a game of six. Let's meet members now that are new to the Hamilton Defensive Corps in 1977. Tim Berryman, linebacker. Pat Donnelly, defensive end. Craig Jensen, defensive back. Gary Shaw, defensive back. That's two Shaws in the Hamilton defensive secondary, the veteran Dave Shaw and the newcomer Gary Shaw. They join Steve Jelly, Lewis Porter, and Craig Jensen back there. Larry Brain, Sam Britz, and Kent Carter, the linebackers. And Hamilton's got that three-man rush they like to use, primarily in this game. A fourth or fifth linebacker might come up to make it a five-man rush. Here's Ely now with a lot of time. Hits Peter Mueller to tight end for a Toronto first down at the 48-yard line of Hamilton. The game will play seven yards. Ely to Peter Mueller. Well, Hamilton's going with that three-man rush, and they're only bringing the three men right now. They're not bringing in the linebackers. They're dropping nine men back in the pass defense. And Chuck Ely got pretty good protection there, but there was a flag thrown, and we may have a holding call against the Toronto Argonauts. And that's unforgivable when you've only got three men rushing and you've got five offensive linemen who are actually blocking for them. The guy they got for holding Russ was uh, an offensive rookie lineman, Peter Sorensen, who has the formidable task of meeting Mike Samples along the way today, and he was called for holding. It's back to the 44-yard line, wiping out the game. We see Nick Vestaya there, who was certainly hoping to play for the Toronto Argonauts, especially against his former team, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. One of the many on the injured list for Toronto. They got about eight starting the season. Here's Chuck Ely with time. Steps up in the pocket. He likes to go. Throws instead a one-handed try. Incomplete. Number 76, Tony Hill. Another Argonaut newcomer who plays as a non-import. Drop that pass. Again, Hamilton is happy to let Chuck run under those conditions. He needed about 20 yards for the first down, 15 yards, and they would have let him run. But he did have Hill open, and this is the early situation with Chuck. In the ball game against Ottawa, where he played so well, he completed 9 out of 10 passes in that first half and had an outstanding football game, and they thought he'd arrive this year. But again now, he's had two receivers open. He had McGraw and now Hill, and he's missed them both for key first downs. Here's the big Z's. They're in an position. Third down, 15. Gets a good cut away with the win. Back head look at the five-yard line is Dave Shaw. 15. Flag is down. He breaks into the open across the 35. The 50-yard line, center field. Shaw finally tucked down inside the 40. The ball came loose, but a handle of teammate picked it up. Number 45, Larry Brain. But a way back at the 20 rush, what appears to be a clipping call against Hamilton. Well, there's no question about it. That was a super run back, and again, that's one of the problems you have when you have such a long punt. You get a 61-yard punt. It's tough for the people to get down and cover that punt. And he got a good burst to the outside. They set it up. And number 31 is called for the clip. And we'll watch as he brings this back. It's early in the run back. You'll see him come from the left of your screen as you look at it here now. And there's the clip and the official throwing it right now. There's no question after the long run. We're going back now. Tim Berryman, number 31. You'll see him. And Tim Berryman is going to come in there and throw that clip right on. Gene Clark, number 50 number right there. Gene Clark is the one that's being clipped. A good, good shot from the end zone. They go back to the 10-yard line thanks to that. Wiping out the fine run back by Shaw. This is Jimmy Jones handing off to Edwards. No game. He was contained right there at the 10-yard line by number 57, Ray Nettles, the new middle linebacker for the Toronto Argonauts. 
Three nothing Hamilton. We'll be right back midway in the first quarter. These are the components of a Sony stereo high fidelity system. They have been crafted with care and precision and are the result of some of the most up-to-date technology in the world today. And that is obvious the moment you hear them. Well, penalties have hurt the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Toronto Argonauts. The Argonauts had half the distance to the goal line marched off against them in a drive that resulted finally in a Hamilton field goal for that 3-0 lead. And then a clipping call, as you saw a few minutes ago, erased that fine run back of Dave Shaw. Edwards, no gain. Now it's second down from the 10-yard line for the Tiger Cats. That is Bill Harrison. He's bottled up across the middle around the 12-yard line, so Hamilton quickly sends in the punting team. Wayne Smith, number 77, was there. Number 61, Bruce Smith, the right side of the Argo defensive line, plugged up the hole. Well, from ground level, we see Harrison coming in here now. Just a little handback trap situation, and there's just no place to go. And number six, Ward Smith, has come to play. They've got him playing that rover spot because of injuries to the Americans and having to play that. And therefore, he wants to play, and he's proven a point out there tonight. He's hitting people. Bennett and Kirk, you saw back there, awaiting this kick from Ken Clark. It's into a win, gusting the time, 25 miles an hour. He keeps it low, gets fair distance. Here is Kirk, 52-yard line, shopping for space. Makes his move down to the 45, and he's all bundled up there. A seven-yard run back. John Kinch, who was to have started the ball game, is on the specialty team for Hamilton. He made the stop, number 27. Well, the Toronto Argonauts have good field position here now, starting on the Hamilton 46, and the one thing that they have been successful at in the, ex in the exhibition games has been spread out, and we've yet to see Chuck go, so maybe with this series, he might start getting to the outside. He pitches the quick draw McGraw. Donnie McGraw from Houston inside the 35-yard line, reaches the 30, picks up 16 yards, and a Toronto first down. Steve Jelly, the safety, finally stopped him. Well, quick draw Russ was good for his name that time, his nickname at least, getting 16 for the Argonauts. Well, the Toronto Argonauts like that quick pitch out of that eye formation of the split back situation, and Clark, number 50, comes out of here and gets a good block. Here he comes around the corner now. Franklin got a block, moving the man to the inside, and Clark got around the corner clean, and that's the secret. It is McGraw again on first down from the 31-yard line, and he picks up maybe three. Stopped by Mike Samples and Craig Jensen. Give him a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. The Big Z with uh, the man in his second Argonaut coaching career, Leo Cahill, opening up his comeback with the Argonauts tonight. And as we said, of all the places to open against the arch rival Tiger Cats in Hamilton. Kirk fanning left now, Franklin going right. Healy looks at his direction, goes short instead to Peter Mueller at the 25. Barges through for what appears to be a first down. He just drove through their rush for the extra yardage. Well, it's the same play they ran before when they were called for holding, and Peter Mueller is actually delaying. He's allowing the outside men to clear that zone, and he's getting down there, and they're pushing the linebackers back. Tim Berriman, number 31, who's playing the inside of that four-man linebacker spot to the strength, and that's Peter Mueller's side, is backing out of there, and Peter's delaying into that flat and getting open. The Argonauts' best offensive chance so far tonight from the 20-yard line, first down. McGraw going left. Flag is down, Mueller again, handled the 10-yard line, could have a first down, depending on the outcome of this infraction. Well, Peter Mueller, who's got three passes so far tonight, one of them called back for holding, catches another one, but again, there's going to be an infraction on that offensive Argonaut team, and it's going to be holding again. Holding. Number 68, Peter Sorensen again got called for holding, and you know he's having some problems out there. I know it's his first ball game, and this is one of the things you have to learn. You have to play to learn how to handle those big defensive ends. There's Sorensen, number 68, caught twice holding. As you say, it is his first game. He's in a tough spot, but he cost the Argonauts dearly that time. A net difference of 20 yards. 
And instead of first down on the 10, it's first and 20 on the 30-yard line. Argos trail 3-0. Four and a half minutes left in quarter one. Kirk going right. Franklin left with McGraw. Ely sprints out. He'll go. Corralled early around the 25-yard line. Ely picks up five. It'll be second down and 15 to go. Tim Berryman, number 31, got it. Well, from the ground, we see Chuck rolling out, and they're bringing some linebackers here now, and they did a pretty good job of containing him here. Kent Carter, number 41, who's going to always play that strong side linebacker spot for this Hamilton club, actually made good penetration and forced Chuck out wide and made the tackle and helped in the tackle to stop him, and it's going to be a second down now and about 13, 14 yards to go. Ely under pressure. He got the first ring job, although neither Ely or Matthew Reed really excelled in preseason games. Ely had a good final exhibition. There's a flag thrown. Ely getting away from Samples at the 35-yard line. Now he's got lots of time. Cross field. It is dropped. Another flag thrown there. Could be interference against Hamilton. Well, we're going to take a while to sort this one out, Don, because there are three flags down out there right now. He threw for Tony Morrow. Chuck Ely going back, and the first flag was thrown right away by the official, so we assume there might have been something on the offensive team. And as Chuck rolled out here now, there was a clip back in off the picture here, and he's trying to find Tony Morrow in here, whether it's pass interference downfield, we're going to find out. They called interference against Hamilton, but the first call, Russ, was strange when the Argonauts did not have an end on the offensive line. There's a rookie, Mark Braganolo, from the University of Toronto, a great star with the Blues. We're back with the same situation now, second and about 14. From the 25-yard line. Argonauts get the down repeated. Franklin in motion right. Kirk going left with Donnie McGraw. Ely in trouble. He's down. He'll lose six. Wow, there's Mike Samples. He's coming on there. They brought a linebacker that time. They brought Tim Berryman as the fourth rusher. And when they do that, they're forcing the center to stay in the middle and block. And they're going to make Sorensen cover samples all alone. And this is important. We'll see one of the linebackers come now. Here he comes, Berriman. He's forcing the middle to stay in there tight now. You can see, and there's no help for Sorensen outside. And when they can force him to do that, that means they expect Mike Samples to get in there and make that tackle, which he did that time. There he is, big, mean, experienced Mike Samples, number 62, a defensive end. And I'll tell you, a guy I'm very impressed with tonight is the fellow you just talked about also, Tim Berryman, a rookie from the University of Ottawa. Boy, he's keen to play his first pro football game. It is third down for the Argonauts and all kinds of real estate to go. They've got 21 yards ahead of them. And position tries for three from 37. And he's got it. So they have offsetting field goals to produce at this stage a 3-3 tie with less than three minutes to play in the first quarter here at Ivor Wynn Stadium in Hamilton. We'll be right back, but first let's pause for a moment. Well, I suppose people are hungry because there's not enough food to go around. The fact is that there's more than enough food for everyone grown in the world each year but it goes to those who can pay the price. Well, we have the food, and they need it. And there's more of them than us, and that could cause trouble someday. Food is a precious resource for all of us, and handouts for the hungry are not a practical solution in the long run. Those who don't have enough must be helped to grow what they need. We should buy things like coffee and bananas, that kind of stuff from the poorer countries, and then they could take the money to buy the food they need. That's the way the world works now, but it doesn't seem to work for the hungry. They need the encouragement to grow their own food. You can help through your church's World Development and Relief Fund. So field goals by the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Dave Pegg, and by Toronto Zanon and Resistor produced a 3-3 tie here. And uh, I talked a moment ago about Tim Berryman, to ease some confusion, of course. He played for Edmonton. This, I meant, is his first 
uh, pro start with a Hamilton Tiger Cats in 1977. He came from the University of Ottawa, and he indeed has come to play. Here is Jimmy Jones, the quarterback with the veteran Terry Evanson. A couple of uh, former Montreal Alouettes at varying stages of their football careers. And Jones last year just missed the 50% completion mark as quarterback here in Hamilton. But he led this Tiger Cats team to a great comeback. In fact, they came within a couple of points, uh, stealing the Eastern title from the Ottawa Rough Riders at Lansdowne Park last November. All right, from the 35-yard line, this is first down for Jones and the Tiger Cats. 2.38 to play in the first quarter. Here's Jimmy Edwards. Look at the great move, darting in and out, finally running out of room. Toronto tacklers all around him. Number 20, newcomer Paul Bennett made the stop. The loss will be two to three yards. Well, they didn't get the guards out that time. Wayne Smith got across the line, got good penetration. The guard didn't get around the corner for them that time. And they're used to safety force with Paul Bennett coming up and forcing that end play. And he did a good job. He didn't make the original tackle, but slowed him down enough for the rest of them to make the tackle. He came back to help. These teams met here a couple of weeks ago at preseason, and the Tiger Cats won it. In fact, that night, the fans were singing Goodbye Leo at Cahill's then second exhibition game. Under pressure, Jimmy Jones. Look at this veteran scramble out of trouble. Almost a clip. It wasn't called. And Jones bought some time and room and got to the 47-yard line. And I'll tell you, Russ, I, I was convinced they were going to call a clip there and the block had sprung him free. Well, the big play is Wayne Nettles. Here he comes up the middle, and he just runs over Edwards. He put the shoulder into him. Should have made the tackle. You never let him get away. And here's where it looks like there might have been a clip. It looked like it could have been. And Jimmy Jones just makes it a super effort to get that first down. But on isolation now, we see Nettles coming in. And a good job by Burley. He took the man who was blocking him away and left a big hole. And Nettles came in there like a freight engine. Edwards, give him a lot of credit, stood right in there with him, got ran over, but Jimmy Jones got to the outside and made the first down. There's a good look at the Hamilton quarterback scrambling for his life down there. Edwards has 10 yards, 15 at the Toronto 47. Ron Fox nailed him. It was Fox who was the victim of what we thought might have been a clip from Henry Waschuk on the previous play. Well, Jimmy Edwards coming around with that end sweep, and this time, instead of trying to go wide, he cut it back up, and Ward Smith being a little over-aggressive. I mentioned earlier he was making some good hits. A little over-aggressive, overran the tackle, coming up from that rover spot, forcing from the inside, and allowed him to get back inside here. From the 47-yard line, a 3-3 three -three tie. Less than a minute to play in quarter one. Here's Jones. Bails it out and screams for Harrison. That is red and caught immediately by Toronto's number 17, Gord Milton. Well, again, Nettles coming on like crazy that time. It really forced them. Let's check in now with Tom McKee. Well, there are a lot of players who would just as soon be out there on the football field. Here's one of them, Gene Mack. Uh, as a defensive star, your offense is really cooking here with Hamilton tonight. Yes, everything is going really well, and uh, I hope it keeps up and looks like we're about to score if the drive continues. What about your knee? Did you go under surgery or not? No, I didn't, and uh, it's doing really well, and I hope to be back by the fourth game of the season. Really? Some people had you out for half the season. Well, uh, it started out the half, and the knee wasn't cut on, and everything is going really good with the therapy and treatment, I hope to be back. Okay, let's see what Jimmy's doing here. Jones throwing for Evanson. He cannot make the catch against Jim Marshall as the miracle counterpart number 15, actually he's 25, of course, inside the 20-yard line. I was going to say about Gene Mack, he's dressed very nicely this evening, Russ. I recall that you and uh, Gene, when he played for you, had a little talk about clothing one night. As a matter of fact, it cost the football player a little money. As a football coach, I'll tell you, you were tough when you had to be. Here's Jimmy Jones. And there's the record on him, three for five, 32 yards here. A fairly impressive first quarter in uh, directing the Hamilton Ticat offense tonight. So that's it for quarter one. And at the end of the first quarter here, the score is Toronto Argonauts 3 and the Hamilton Tiger Cats 3. CBC Sunday. London at the turn of the century, a city where the rich were waited on hand and foot by servants. Such a girl was Louisa Layton, a scullery maid, who decided she was cut out for something better. I want to get by by working for the best people there is. Rich people. Lords and ladies have big houses and jewels and lovely clothes and the best food. And I want to see it all and be part of it. 
She became the Duchess of Duke Street, hostess and friend of princes and kings. Me what? Yes. And who does Mr. Nigel Blayton Backhurst think he is? Yes, I the baby's the staff of a fidget on the subject. Yeah, Mary was saying he's been difficult. Well, the likes of him we can do without, yes. we shall in future. Since you've torn it in half, I'll only charge you half. Hand over ten pounds, nine shillings and four pence. And then clear off out of my hotel. Watch The Duchess of Duke Street Sunday night at 9 on CBC. This is Don Chevrier with Russ Jackson and Tom McKee at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. A 3-3 tie, a field goal each way. And here's Ken Clark with that impressive average in 1976. He's got the win behind him now. The Argonauts have got men about 10 yards deep in the end zone. Kirk and Bennett. Well, they should be. It's in there by five. This is Bennett to his five-yard line, seven-yard line, and brought down by Henry Washchuck right there. Good coverage by the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and this is one of the things that teams have to work on more and more as the seasons go along because teams are starting to keep people who are very specialized in returning those punts and kickoffs, and especially the punts. And those offensive linemen now have to hustle down there and have good separation going down there to cover that entire field because it is a little more difficult on our field as opposed to an American field because of the width. Well, that's a good addition for Ken Clark on his season's average. Young as it may be, a 55-yard punt. Run back to the 7-yard line. The Argos starting deep under starter Chuck Ely at quarterback. Hill shifting right, Franklin left. Into the end zone, Ely bails out to quick draw McGraw. And he's cut down at the nine-yard line by Sam Britz, who limits that play to a gain of two. Well, one of the few times the Hamilton team will go with four down linemen, and when they go with this four down lineman, number 41, Kent Carter, becomes the right defensive end. And he went in there and had a good four-man rush that time and covered that screen very well. Kent Carter had a pretty good career with the Ottawa Rough Riders, and they just had too many Canadians, and he became a victim of the number game and went out west and came back here last year and ended up with the Tiger Cats and has found himself a home. There he is, number 41 for Hamilton. This is second down, Toronto. They have eight yards to go from their own nine-yard line. Healy is knocked off his pins of the four-yard line. Good early contact from Kent Carter, the man we just told you about, and Mike Stamples, number 62. Argos will be third down and 13 yards to go from the four-yard line. Kent Carter, who's playing that strong side linebacker, comes in here, and he just forces this play. He's deep in the backfield. We see him there, and he forces the offensive guard, number 50, Gene Clark, to actually stop the quarterback, and that's good penetration. You can't let that linebacker get that far into the backfield. Otherwise, he's going to bottle you up all night. There's Mike from the end zone, and position kicks into that win. Hangs it up good and high, 43-yard line. This is Jimmy Edwards. Hamilton fans with a gasp and a roar as he started to move those legs, but he was caught early by Tony Morrow, number 11, at the 40-yard line after a run back of five. Hamilton in good field position, and there's Leo Cahill. A few years older, a few years wiser, but uh, very anxious to redevelop the Argonauts beginning here in 1977. Well, in the last series of plays, the Toronto defense came on. Ray Nettles, the middle linebacker, came almost every play. And now with Hamilton in good position on their 41, we'll see if they continue to do this. Notice a little double blue trim on Leo's shirt tonight. Of course, everything has to match for a good luck symbol. Here's the pitch to Edwards. Oh, he got away from one shot at him. The number 61 wraps him up. That's Bruce Smith, the defensive right tackle. Got away from Marshall for a moment. And net result. No gain, a loss of a yard. Make it around the 41-yard line for Hamilton. They'll be second down, 11 to go. Well, this is the second down passing situation when they've been coming, and we'll look to see if his linebackers continue to come after Jimmy Jones because he has had some pressure on him with the linebackers getting free. John Kinch uh, in likely with a play from Bob Shaw for Bill Harrison playing alongside of Jimmy Edwards in the backfield. Jones points the pass, has to bail out of there. Smith after him. Around Smith at the 40, out of running room and legal territory at around the 39-yard line. He got maybe a yard and a half.
Well, they didn't come with the dog here, but they get a good rush on the left side, which forces them out of the pocket. Cornelius Walker coming in here, puts him out of the pocket, and along with Burley, and they just force him out, and it's just good speed. You won't find too many guys with speed like Bruce Smith when he went in a foot race with him, and he didn't let him get around the corner. Wayne Smith coming to the inside, and Bruce Smith will get foot race with him right about now, and that's got to be a super job for a defensive tackle to go in a foot race with a man like that and force him out of bounds to the sideline. That's right. It's third down and uh, eight and a half yards to go. Field goal attempt by Tag. It is short. Bounces under the goal post. This is Bennett to the 10-yard line, and he's blocked by Waschuk. Did well to hang on to the ball on contact around the 12-yard line. Dan Bovair there on the tackle along with Henry Waschuk for Hamilton. I'll tell you, we got two very tough defensive football teams on the field tonight. The score reflects that in a 3-3 three, three tie, three and a half minutes into the second quarter. We're talking to Bob Shaw earlier today, he said that they were going to come on a little bit. He felt that three-man line of theirs last year with the personnel they had, they remained fairly stagnant in his own defense, but he felt they've improved enough in that defensive secondary that they're going to be a little more aggressive. And he was said they were going to come after this Toronto team, and this is a good time to do it. Neil Lundgren, the first time he's carried the ball tonight, I believe, gets across the 20-yard line near the 21. That'll be good for a gain of eight yards. Tim Berryman, number 31. Again, that outstanding quick linebacker cut him down. Well, there's no question if Neil Lumsden, number 32, can cure that fumbleitis he has in protecting the ball when he's hit, he has to be one of the good fullbacks in Canadian football. Lumsden goes for the first down and picks it up at the 25-yard line. So the Argonauts now have a little more breathing room around their own 25. That's a pretty impressive start for Lumsden in uh, 1976. Nominated as the Canadian Rookie of the Year. And uh, this is second season for the Ottawa University graduate with Toronto. Kirk left, Franklin right. Here's the pitch to McGraw. He's got some speed and some moves. Fumbles the football. Lewis Porter's got it. Porter, the 45. The Toronto 40-yard line. Joe Parrish, part of that Georgia connection, made the stop as Hamilton takes the ball. We'll be right back. Can we come back and tell us over there and show? Okay. Maybe we won't have enough time. Chevrolet Chevelle, the most popular mid-sized car in Canada, and we intend to keep it that way. With front disc brakes, a 35,000 volt ignition system, double panel roof with insulation, comfortable full foam seats, computer mat suspension and inner fender linings, all standard. The 1977 Chevelle, we've kept a good thing going. CBC, Saturday. Says here, wait 60 seconds and Miracle Glue sticks for a lifetime. <laughs> You've been holding on for 20 minutes. Ma, I uh, think I got a, a little problem here. Hi, Larry. Hi, Ma. Kathy, I think your husband has a problem with his little hands. <laughs> Watch King of Kensington, Saturday night at 10.30. On that last play, we saw number 66, the tackle, Mike Wilson, one of the new boys come out, and he pulled out here and got himself a super block to spring McGraw downfield. But then after that, he went along there and had a problem because he fumbled the ball. But he got out there, and he got the good block here. That's where the play went well. All right, we're back live now. Jones is going deep at the five-yard line. Touchdown for Harris. A super catch over the arms of Paul Bennett. 
Well, it almost looked like Bennett gave up on that play. He was in good position, but it was just a super throw by Jones. You can't throw the ball any better than he did here. And he got real good protection, and he laid that ball right up over top of Bennett, who was step for step with Harris, and Harris had great concentration in catching it. Bennett had no idea where that football was, Russ. He's now caught two, Harris, for a total of 78 yards tonight. He's made the two big offensive plays in combination with Jimmy Jones. The Ticats lead 9-3. Peg will try to make it 10-3. And he does. The Tiger Cats quickly march into a converted touchdown lead. 9.49 to play here in the second quarter at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. There's the score. A pretty football play just executed by Jones to Harris. It follows that turnover on the fumble recovery by Lewis Porter. Hey, you know, big Gene Mack, who I was talking to a minute ago, just came over and slapped me on the back. I wish he wouldn't do that. He's too big, and I... Oh, that hurt. Russ, I don't know how you had the nerve to find that man for his duds. <laughs> There's Gene Clark with a... Bit of a problem with his shoulder pads, and Tommy Bowen, a longtime equipment manager with that Toronto team, looking after him. Well, we should add why he was fine. Gene Mack, when he was with the Argonauts, he wore a captain, and of course, the uh, team dress regulations don't allow for that sort of individuality. He wear whatever he wants. <laughs> Around you, head, yes. <laughs> Here's the kickoff coming down to Bennett. Goal line, 15, outside, 25, good speed, 40 to the Toronto 50-yard line. Dave Shaw, with equally great speed, tracked him down. Well, you think that Bennett didn't want to make up for something right there? Yes, sir. He showed it, too. He made a good run back. There's an injured player and a flag down, Russ. Well, taking that kickoff here, he just took it just outside the goal line, and he just turned it upfield, and really it was no coverage at all. He came through the hole there, and Shaw got turned around here, and if we got a good block by Mark Bragagnola, he might have gone all the way with that. I didn't see where that clip took place, but Hamilton has Paul Sheridan down. I don't know if he was the victim of the clip or not. Vic Cobbs, the former mayor of Hamilton, will be honored tonight at halftime here at Iverwind Stadium. Vic is a former sportscaster, as you know, was always an enthusiastic booster of all sports here in Ontario as well, Canada in general. But specifically, he was instrumental uh, in having the CFL Hall of Fame established right here in Hamilton. So this week, the friends of Vic Cobbs have said, thanks, Vic, for all that you have done over the years, and we're happy to add our thanks, too. And all over the stadium are pictures of Vic Cops. Very unfortunate accident that happened to him a couple of years ago. We wish he and his family well. We also wish this injured player well. We try to get in a little closer and find out what the trouble is. Sheridan uh, still down. That's the second injury of the of the evening of what may be a major nature. Now he's on his feet. We have the official Scott McBrien taken out. It's a very ominous looking injury taken away by ambulance to hospital early in the first quarter. And now Sheridan, a member of the Ticats specialty team, lifts off with assistance from the Tiger Cat bench over on the far side. Player ready now to resume. The Argonauts in possession at the 34-yard line. Called back to that point because of a clip. Franklin, number nine, swings in motion right. Ely sprints left to Peter Mueller. 45-yard line, but another flag is down. He appears to have first down yardage. I will get the call for you in just a moment. The offense, uh, the offense at least, is against Toronto. It's a holding call. I wonder if it's Peter Sorensen who would have the hat trick in holding. Yes, it is. Number 68, Sorensen, his third holding penalty of this game. Paul Sheridan suffering from a twisted knee, it would appear. Is there any sport other than... Well, they've just taken Sorensen out of here. What's that, Tom? I say Sheridan is suffering, uh, it looks like a twisted knee, and I was going to say, is there any sport other than football that suffers more knee injuries? Mary may, uh, maybe Mary's proposal, but other than that. 
<laughs> That's right. He's ranked number one in this game. First down with the penalty yardage. 20 yards to go. And Ely carries across the 30-yard line, picking up about eight yards. Stopped by Pat Donnelly, number 59, as they work on Sheridan, the injured Hamilton player. Argonauts are adjusting a little bit because of Soren's problems. Gene Clark has gone out to tackle Al McLean in a Gene Clark's left guard spot. The score is 10-3, Tiger Cats. We're in the second quarter, eight and a half minutes left. Ely, as the flag flies, hits Pitt Brown McGraw. He fumbles the football and goes over to the Tiger Cats. on that particular play they're arguing now whether it was a completion or not i know neil is probably yelling that but number 47 brit's got a pretty good hit in there as he came over the middle of mcgraw but again it was a holding call originally against the toronto offensive line and then they fumbled the ball and then they gave the ball away this time it was gene clark called for holding number 50 and he moved out the tackle he's got samples and that's the guy they're having problems with we see number 50 out here now there he is. He makes the tackle on Samples, number 62. The penalty's long called, and then the good hit by number 22, Craig Jensen. Knocked the ball loose from McGraw, and Hamilton makes the recovery in good field position again. Another costly turnover for Toronto to Hamilton. The ball at the 49-yard line of the Argonauts. Here's Jones. First down, throws. Harris to Oh, he got close line going downfield and lost the ball in full flight. Ward Smith covering him along with Paul Bennett. Well, Harris just split the scene between the two of them, and he had the ball until he was collared there by Ward Smith, and he dropped it after he was collared for non-completion. But again, they're working that rookie part of the secondary. They're working on Bennett, and they're putting Harris out there with him. Russ, I've been advised, uh, unfortunately, that the injured official, Scott McBrien, broke his leg in that incident early in the game. Here we see Harris going down here now, and he gets collared about now, and it's Bennett that's got a hold of him with help from number six, Ward Smith. Second down and 10. Early movement, not back in time. Argonauts likely called offside. The long throw again, too far for Terry Evans, of the five-yard line. Marshall covering for Toronto. Well, we're going to have uh, an offside against the Toronto Argonauts, so they're going to get another chance at this, and they're really working that right side of the Toronto secondary, and they're going deep with it. They're trying to get it all in a hurry. Offside, Toronto. Offside. Burley jumps off here. He's noted for his quickness. He's like Granville Liggins. He gets off that ball and on that mark and just didn't get back in time to actually do the job. Now Hamilton's got themselves a second and five situation on the 44-yard line. Now Black & Decker has come along with a handyman's helper that's mighty strong. It's small and light, but it pulls its weight. It's the super incredible workmate. Yeah, it's more than a bench and more than a vice. It's got both things working, and that's kind of nice. You can pound on it, a saw on it, a plane of door on it, and a whole lot more. Yeah, when you're alone and there's work to do, the working mate'll help you see it through. Second down with five to go from the Toronto 44-yard line. And Leo Cahill must be pulling his hair out or what's left of it. But all these infractions called against his Toronto Argonauts tonight, principally holding penalties, a couple of turnovers, they've all been costly. Jones to Edwards. This will be a handle and first down. He lunges in toward the 35-yard line. And those fans are really getting on Leo Cahill, which they love to do here at Hamilton, in behind the Argonaut bench to the far side. Don, you mentioned that he were, was wearing some double blue on his shirt. There's been a little double blue from his lips, too. He's not happy with the officials. The fans know it. They get on him. It's a frustrating situation for him, so they're just jiving back and forth. Well, he can't have blue lips because it's cold, I'll tell you. It's a hot, humid night here in Hamilton. If you want to lose weight, play in this game. You might lose seven or eight pounds. 
From the 35, the collision on handoff to Joe, to Edwards from Jones. Now a flag, could be a face guard over on the sideline. The Argonauts guilty of almost every infraction in the CFL rule book tonight, Russ. Well, number 15, Jim Marshall came up and made a good play on Jimmy Edwards. He tried to get outside that last man and Marshall didn't let him go. As he came out there, he got a hold of it, got the face mask. Jimmy Edwards now starting inside, and he's got option running here. If it's closed down as it was there with the Comet Burley, he's going outside. Marshall plays it real well here, but instead of letting go of that mask, knowing he's going to get some help, he hangs on, and that referee's right there to see it, and another big penalty against the Argos. You'll we'll see, see it again right, right here, here now as he'll reach in now. He grabbed the helmet first, reaches in and grabs it. Then he lets go. The official closest can't see it. It's the referee who has a vision, direct vision on that, called the play. We see the flag. That cost them 15 more. A little walk into the 20-yard line where it's first and 10 for Hamilton. They lead 10 to 3. Harrison, as a fly flies, cut down after a gain of two. Well, again, it could be another penalty here against the Toronto Argonauts. Gordy Norton seemed to leave a little early there, but I'm not sure whether it was okay, him as that uh, linebacker. Number 17, Toronto offside. Number 17, Gordy Norton moved a little early, and they get called for offside. They go to the 15-yard line for first and five. The top of the screen, we see number 17, Gordy Knowlton, and he moved across, didn't get back, and they get another offside penalty, and penalties in this drive certainly have hurt the Toronto Argonauts. Hamilton's run and pass, but mainly walked to the 15-yard line. Edwards swings out of the backfield left, heading for the end zone. Here's the pass to Harris. Good lunging catch at the four-yard line. It's rule or reception. <laughs> Craig Nettles, number 57, the middle linebacker, comes in here on a blitz. They do a good job of picking it up, and therefore it leaves it vacant in those flat areas and gives them a good completion for a first down. We'll see him come in here now. They bunch it up in the middle, and they don't let him get in here. And Jimmy Jones, showing good poise, completes the pass for a first down. But when you bring those linebackers, you leave those vacant areas. What a catch by Harris. Now from the four, first and goal to go, Hamilton leading 10-3. to three. Five minutes to play until halftime. Edwards fighting down to around the two-yard line. Ray Nettles, number 57, met him again. Good play by number 17, Gordy Knowlton. He's a rookie linebacker. He came to us as a slot back last year to the Toronto Argonauts, and they've converted him to a linebacker. He made super penetration there to turn Edwards upfield quickly to give those linebackers a chance. Well, there's a big story, Russ. 86 yards, maybe in key situations, evaded Hamilton drives, and certainly evaded this drive as the tie cats are down between the one and two yard line on second down. Henry Washchuck settles over the ball at center. Jones to Edwards, touchdown! Jimmy Edwards is the guy they want to go to, and they just give him a straight hand up and good fire out here by the offensive line. We miss them now, but that entire offensive line is up to the goal line, and when you do that, you get down low, force the Toronto defensive players to go low, which they are trying to do, and give Edwards lots of opportunity to come up over top. And you've got to bank on the defensive backs filling in there for you because the defensive line must go low and try and stop the initial penetration of the offensive line. Here's Peg. Good again for a 17-3 Hamilton Tiger Cat lead. Four minutes and 18 seconds remaining until halftime here at Iverwind Stadium. It's been all Hamilton in terms of scoring, save that field goal by Andrew Zishin, and all well, Toronto virtually in terms of penalties. Dave Pegg has two converts and a field goal tonight, accounting for five points. A newcomer from Windsor, this is his style. He gets right on top of that ball and flexes that leg back on the hinge and pumps it through. That's 49 yards they travel, Russ, in five plays. That's a little misleading with all the Hamilton penalties. 
three key penalty calls on that drive eight of the tiger cats well peg has to be one of the big improvements to this offense because they certainly suffered last year with not being able to make those field goals when they got in play it goes back to work now on the hamilton kickoff ball fumbled to the 10-yard line by bennett now he gets a 20 25 still spinning taken down to the 27 yard line Harrison was there along with the former Argonaut Barry Finley to make the tackles for Hamilton well Bennett who's got a lot of action returning these kickoffs and the previous one took it back a long way but a clip was called on him got turned to the inside this time and there's good contact here coming in a little late number 28 but certainly Hamilton doing a pretty good job of covering those kickoffs and punts tonight except for that one that Bennett broke Veterans do Francis centering the ball for Toronto. Here's Ely now rolling with time to Peter Mueller. That'll be a Toronto first down. And I do not see a single red flag on the field. Well, they sprinted to the right that time, and they've, they've got uh, Parrish and Wilson out there, and they believe that they're the two guys that are going to help this offensive line and sort of lead them out of the wilderness. And they've been having their problems on the left side because of the injuries, and it's unfortunate you have to open a season that way. Harris and Wilson dubbed the Georgia Connection. Chuck Ely. He's five for seven tonight. Lumsden, the ball carrier. Neil Lumsden, the fullback, reached out to about the 42. Got a couple of yards for Toronto on that play. Three minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the second quarter. 17 to three. Hamilton Tiger Cats lead. We'd like to remind you that on Saturday, the soccer game of the week will feature the Portland Timbers and the Toronto Metros Croatia. Join Steve Armitage and Graham Leggett for all the action. Check your local listings for the time in your area on CBC Television on Saturday. Here at 17 to 3, a break in the action, three minutes until the half. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Tom McKee for Major League Baseball 77. You're looking at Jackie Moore, the third base coach of the Toronto Blue Jays of the American League. And no, he's not swatting flies or brushing away bugs. It's Jackie Moore's responsibility at third base to give the baseball signals to the batters and the runners at first, second, and or third bases, and also to communicate with the first base coach, Harry Warren. What do all these signals mean? Where do they come from? We'll try to find out in talks with Tony Kubek on Inside Baseball in our broadcasts this year of the Toronto Blue Jays. So join myself, Tom McKee, along with Don Chevrier and Tony Kubek. And also for Major League Baseball 77, comprehensive coverage of the Montreal Expos of the National League with Dave Van Horn and Duke Snyder with the play-by-play -play and our host, Bob McDevitt. Tomorrow night, see the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Expos at the Olympic Stadium and the Blue Jays meet the Chicago White Sox in Toronto. Check local listings for game time in your area. There's Toronto center Stu Francis, who was injured in the last play, trying to walk that off. Uh, Russ? Ron, he had uh, knee surgery in the offseason, and certainly that could be one of the problems. They were a little concerned about Stu early in training camp. He wasn't working out regularly, and maybe he's got a recurrence of that same problem, because it certainly is a leg problem. You look right at that knee at the Argonaut bench, trying to diagnose what might be wrong with him. It's Dr. Bob Joba there, the team surgeon who's looking at it so it must be something to do with the injury that he operated on in the offseason 17 to 3 Hamilton with a big two converted touchdown lead here late on the first half they have three minutes and nine seconds remaining we notice that Peter Sorts and number 68 is back in there at the offensive tackle spot and uh, no matter who's played that spot has had their problems with Mike Samples who has given them a lot of pressure and it's interesting to note that Argos have had more success going to their right than they have to their left, and that's to be expected with the offensive setup that they've had to go with tonight. Notice they haven't yet tied Sorensen's hands behind his back. They're giving him another chance out there after three holding calls. Well, that's true. Another interesting situation is that they haven't got to the wide receivers yet. Dennis Franklin had a, a great situation going for him in that Ottawa game, but they haven't got the ball to him tonight. Russ, as we watch the work on Francis, now getting back to live action, we'll watch Chuck Ely, snowed under, Sample's got a piece of him. Boy, big trouble for Chuck Ely, a loss of eight yards, back at the 35. 
Fritz chased him all the way back. Well, number 47 in slow motion we see her coming from the weak side. They're going to the left, and Brits found the opening. Samples came a little late, but stopped Chuck from getting completely to the outside. And when you stop the quarterback from getting outside when he wants to sprint, which is what Samples did, it gives those linebackers, if they're coming up the middle or any of the defensive tackles, a chance to make the hit. And that's exactly what happened with Sam Brits because he started as the inside weak linebacker on the four linebacker scheme with the Hamilton Tiger game. The loss is five yards. It is third and 15. And you see Zen and Ann Resition on the right of your screen, ready for a third down punt. Into a diminishing wind here at Hamilton. Back to Edwards at the 30 yard line. Luck out. Finally caught from behind by Toronto's number 73, Rick Silvietta. Well, I'm just going to say, Don, that this next series is going to be an important one for the Argonaut defense, but certainly with that run back now by Edwards, it makes it even more important. It's very important now that they come up big and not let this Hamilton team go in and score any more points. They're down two converted touchdowns, and with Edwards receiving this punt, getting good protection. We see it open up here, and there's a bit of a clip there you might have called on Sorensen, but Edwards just broke it through the seam there and made it back to the Toronto 54-yard line. Round it back 21 yards from the 54 now. Two and a half minutes until halftime. Hamilton's in head 17 to 3. Edwards tries the left side. He'll have eight yards at the 46. Russ, there are two other games to open the CFL season tonight. The Calgary Stampeders at BC and Saskatchewan playing in Winnipeg. Well, it's sort of a delayed draw situation in here now. They let the offensive or defensive lineman penetrate and then push them to the outside, and Edwards has any place he wants to go. He picks the hole for himself, and this is what you can do with quick defensive linemen. Let them declare themselves and then run where they're not. Just let the offensive lineman take them where they want to go. This is second and two. Jones can't find a back. He'll go alone. will not get the first down. Paul Bennett took the feet out from under him. Ward Smith tagged him down. It's going to be third down and about two for Hamilton. Well, Jones a little upset with that play because when you get in that type of position this late in the half, you'd like to add to that lead, and especially with a second and two situation, to have a play go awry on you. But that's what happens in these early games. It's something that is going to happen, and we're going to see it over the first two or three weeks. Here's Bennett, now joined by Kirk on the Toronto punt return team. Clark is in the lineup. Exactly two minutes now remaining in the second quarter. 17 to 3 for Hamilton is the score. Clark tonight better than his average of 1976, which was 47 yards. His best so far, 55. He's got the following wind here. This one, not great for him. He angled it off toward the sidelines. It bounces out near the five. The Argonauts will start deep with a minute and 41 left. I mentioned the other opening games tonight, Calgary and Vancouver and Saskatchewan and Winnipeg. Tomorrow night, the other two Eastern teams open in Ottawa at Lansdowne Park. Marv Levy's Montreal Alouettes against George Brancato's Ottawa Rough Riders. Now that should be an interesting ball game, Don, just to see what Montreal has without Johnny Rogers. They've come along quite well during the exhibition games and uh, there's a guy I don't want to meet. He's got that gun ready. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's uh, firing blanks to signify halftime here. A minute and 41 seconds of playing time away. Well, a couple of times last year when I was here, I wish I had one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might have come in handy. Ely bailing out. Chuck Ely will have a first down. A good run. We've got three penalty flags down. Well, when you start to scramble like that, and you see all those flags, you have to start thinking there might have been some clipping calls in there because Chuck was scrambling all over and the Hamilton players were being knocked down. So we might have another one of those penalties against the Argonauts, which have hurt them throughout this entire first half. Might have been number nine, Franklin, they called for clipping. Yes, it is, Dennis Franklin. That takes it way back. They were at the 10. Now they're back inside the five yard line. Well, Chuck Ely attempting to pass. Now he has lots of time. It's sort of a semi roll to the right. They give him pretty good protection. Now he starts to run and we'll try and pick up number nine coming in from the side here, getting a clip in here. There it is right there on Porter, clipping number 24, Lewis Porter. It was a dandy. No question about that one. <laughs> 
All right, they get out to about the eight-yard line this time. Neil Lumsden carrying for Toronto with a minute and 27 seconds left in the second quarter. It'll be interesting to see if Hamilton has a hurry-up offense because if Toronto does not get a first down here with second and 12, then they're going to have to give Hamilton the ball somewhere around midfield with still about a minute left. Second down and 12. Well, what happened there? Did the quarterback ever get the ball? Well, I don't know who's got that ball, but the center fired it up in an awful big hurry. And if Chuck got that ball back, he was very fortunate because that could have been a big play. Nobody seemed to be ready for the ball to come up, and lo and behold, there it was. Al McLean, Al McLean is playing center for Stu Francis, who was hurt a moment or two ago. We might be able to unscramble this puzzle right here. Well, Chuck is hardly in there now, and you can see none of the offensive linemen are ready to move, so it must have been a missed call on behalf of the center. And McLean, again, one of these young rookies, is having to play now. And more than another one of those things, when you're quarterback there, you just hope that all the fingers are still there after something like that. That's right. And they are third down, about 15 now, from the end zone and resistion. Into the wind, a good kick. Backing up Dave Shaw to midfield. Flipping around the 46-yard line, he'll take that with 48 seconds remaining until halftime. There's the flag, one of the long-time traditions that remains despite the electronic timing systems in all CFL parks. Now we wouldn't know what to do without it. We have to see that flag go up there. The clock won't start now until Hamilton puts the ball in play on the change of possession in the last three minutes of each half. The clock won't start, but then after this play, if it's not an incompleted pass or the Hamilton ball carrier gets out of bounds, We'll see if they do go to a hurry-up offense. Mike Eben, they have not gone to him tonight, Russ. The ex-Argo, he's on the right side. Gary Tufford's in there. This is Harrison to the 30-yard line. A 17-yard gain and a Hamilton first down, 41 seconds left. Well, that's what he does so well. He adds to that offense. He just circled out of that backfield and just ran a little seam pattern. You see Edwards go on the other side, and Harrison is doing exactly the same thing. And the quarterback has the alternative of taking either one. He usually reads the middle linebacker, and whichever side he favors, and probably Nettles favored Edwards, Harrison had the big slot. Two x Iger receivers in there now, even in Gary Tufford. Here's Jimmy Edwards spinning his way down to the 15-yard line. Well, this is where they have to make a decision now. Edwards getting around that corner, and they're in close now with about 25 seconds to go. So they've got to make a decision what they're going to do. We have another Argonaut player hurt, but Edwards has that ability, has the quick feet. Again, it's an option-type run. He's got the guard butler out in front of him, but he just has those swivel hips and the quick feet that you never get a full shot at him. Russ, the injured player is Ray Nettles, of course. He's had some injury problems throughout his BC Lion career. And now he's down at the 20-yard line after that play with 23 seconds left. Rick Sovieta would be the replacement for Ray Nettles. Well, it'll be interesting to see who they put in the middle there, Don, because during the preseason games, Tom Chandler, who was one of the outside linebackers, whenever they took Nettles out, they moved Tom Chandler into the middle and played him there. Could be Ron Fox. Certainly Fox over. is not really a middle linebacker. No. He is an outside linebacker, so I assume it's got to be Sovietic. Well, Nettles is up and uh, is moving fairly briskly under his own power now, so he may be all right. Ray Nettles trying to get in there now and make the tackle, and he actually got tied up in there with two of his own ball players and one of those innocent things that happened. First down, Hamilton near the 15-yard line. 10 seconds, 9, the clock counting down. Jones setting the throw. It is almost picked off, but dropped there by number 27, Lauren Richardson, the former Saskatchewan Rough Rider center fielder. Well, the crowd is getting a little excited that they might run out of the time. They've got four seconds left and might miss that field goal, but certainly they did take a lot of time, and with the injury to Nettles, they could have been up on the ball waiting with the play and not giving the fans a little heart failure. Jimmy Jones, that's <laughs> right. His arm was hit as he threw the ball, and it wound up right at Richardson's feet. He couldn't bring it in. Four seconds on the clock. The Tiger Cats, not out of downs, but almost out of time, will try a field goal to go on top by 17 points. Peg, from 22 yards away, hits again. One second remaining. 
And the handle of the Tiger Cats have compiled a 20-3 lead over the Toronto Argonauts. A very familiar story here at Iverwind Stadium in these Toronto Hamilton battles the last couple of years. The Tiger Cats playing their best football, perhaps right here at home. They seem to save it for Toronto. And the Argonauts, as the timer has the gun ready for the halftime, are really victims of their own mistakes that have led to penalties. Kirk is back there with McGraw, number 25, the bottom part of your screen. And Paul Bennett, Kirk in the middle. Argonauts will get a run back, and that's about all. And then, under Leo Cahill, their new head coach, endeavor to regroup at halftime, trailing by 17. Short kickoff near Allison, but going out of bounds. Of course, the time does not start until the ball is received. So the one second remains, and the Argonauts will have an option of another kickoff for taking it right there with a the play. Well, at halftime, we've got an update on what's coming up in the CFL. The training camps of the two teams you're watching tonight, Russ Jackson's highlights of the first half, and a special tribute to the former mayor of the city of Hamilton, Vic Cox. The Argonauts have elected to have Hamilton repeat the kick from the 30-yard line. Got a couple of rule changes this year. We'll pass them on as we go along. One uh, involves blocking on a completed pass. After it's caught, unlimited blocking is now permitted. That's the major rule change. Another line drive, bounding kickoff through McGraw's hands. The 25, he's got it now. And he's tracked down by number 17, newcomer Gary Shaw. Time runs out, and that is it for the first half of the first Toronto Hamilton meeting of 77. At the end of the first half, the score, Hamilton 20 and Toronto 3. and CBC Radio. Je parle français à la radio de Radio Canada. I speak English on CBC FM Radio. Je parle français à la radio de fréquence modulée de Radio Canada. I am the Armed Forces Service. I am Radio Canada International, bringing Canada to the world in 11 languages. I speak English on CBC Television. Je parle français à la télévision de Radio Canada. I'm Northern Service Radio, speaking many northern languages and dialects. I'm also Northern and service television. Yes. We are yes. And all for less than the cost of one ounce of maple syrup per person per day. CBC, bringing Canadians together. Again, everybody, I'm Tom McKee, and welcome to CBC Intermission Control. We'll be reporting from Eastern Conference games of the CFL on CBC all season long, bringing you up to date on other games in the CFL, along with scoring statistics, the standings, and other news of, in of interest. First of all, let us go back and pick up where we left off, the end of last season and the standings in the Western Conference. Saskatchewan proved themselves the winningest team in all of pro football in Canada, with 11 victories for 22 points. Winnipeg was just one game behind at 20 points. In third place came the Edmonton Eskimos, 19 points, followed in fourth and fifth place by the BC Lions and the Calgary Stampeders. As far as the Eastern Conference of the CFL is concerned, the Ottawa Rough Riders finished in top spot, but with only 19 points, they would have finished only in third place had they been in the Western Conference. An interesting statistic. Hamilton, exactly 500 ball for the season. Eight wins, eight losses, no ties for 16 points. The Montreal Alouettes picked up that third and last playoff spot in the East with a better record against the Toronto Argonauts, although Montreal and Toronto finished with identical 15 points. In the 1977 season, we have five coaches who were not involved in the Canadian Football League in a head coach capacity last year. 
and we thought you'd like to meet them. First of all, we swing west where four of the new coaches are, and to the Edmonton Eskimos, where we meet Huey Campbell, and he has big boots to fill, those of his present boss, Ray Yock. Most recently, he was the head coach at Whitworth College in Spokane. He has a 67% win-loss record. Here's Jim Eddy of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He was at New Mexico State University, a defensive star in his playing days. He joined the Rough Riders in 1974 as a defensive coordinator. One year later, his defense was the best in all the West. Vic Rapp of the BC Lions. He is their chief tail twister this year. He came up through the coaching ranks in college and professional football to Edmonton in 1971. Offensive coordinator until he took on this new challenge. Here is Jack Goda, a great cup winner with Ottawa before heading for the World Football League. It's his job to get Calgary back on a winning note. And if anybody can do it, Jake Goda can do it. He's knowledgeable, affable, and extremely confident. Leo Cahill, Toronto. To say Leo's football career has been eventful is an understatement. He came to Canada through the Alouettes, joined the old Continental League, then to the Argos, then the WFL, and back to the Toronto Argonauts again. The fact is that Leo Cahill has been the winningest coach for the Toronto Argonauts in the past quarter of a century. And who do you pick to finish first in the East and West? We pick Winnipeg in the West and a repeat performance by the Ottawa Rough Riders in the East. You may not agree. Let's take a look at training camp. Well, we'll do that in just a moment. Uh, would you pass the cream, honey? Sure. Oh, by the way, what, what should we give Karen for her birthday? Mm, well, I thought a new bike. Could I have some coffee? Hmm. How about one of those new instant cameras? You know, the small one. Picture in 10 seconds. Uh, Are you taking the station wagon today? No, I'm taking a hard top. She said she wanted a record player. You know, the one that operates in batteries. Hey, I gotta go. It's almost 8.30. Uh, listen, don't forget, we're taking the kids to the circus Saturday. All right. And about Karen's gifts, let's give her the camera and the bike. We can always give her the phonograph for Christmas. Fine. Her name is Aisha. She lives in a small village in Bangladesh. What our children take for granted, she cannot even hope for. You can save a child. Please send donations to the Canadian Save the Children Fund, 70 Hayter Street, Toronto, Ontario. As you know, the regular schedule of the CFL gets underway tonight. But the season really started on May 31st, the first legal day of training camp. Let's go back then to the early days of June now and check in with the training camp of the Argonauts and the Tiger Cats. The light survivor wind stadium looking down on the Tiger Cats' unique training camp using both artificial turf here and natural grass on the adjoining Brian Timmis field. But man-made or man-cut, general manager and coach Bob Shaw looks only for talent. Through a process of elimination and drills that we are doing, we try to gather as much information individually and then collectively about each player on our football team. And all we're doing is uh, what I always say uh, is an educated guess as to the potential of one player over another. The big thing in the Canadian Football League is to make adjustments and use the personnel where you feel that they're best suited to play. There's always a lot of disappointment in training camp. I explain it to the squad as it's like a Christmas uh, time for a coach. Bringing new people in, opening the package, and uh, getting a surprise one way or the other. Because, as you know, uh, most all players that are brought into camp come highly recommended with a lot of uh, tools, uh, a lot of uh, ability. Then, when you match them up, ability against ability, some rise to the occasion and others don't. Go get him, go get him! Larry! Stay with him, give him resistance, Joe. Stay on your feet. But you got to take him into that area. Do it now. Okay, let's go red, right. Second. A fellow knows in his own heart 50, whether he can do the job. Uh, very seldom do you have that decision to make because there's generally a, 
a fairly uh, clear-cut uh, line between those people that you keep and those that you don't. Uh, for example, we had uh, earlier, after the first week of practice, we had three or four fellas come in and uh, say, Coach, there's just no sense of us staying here because they see the competition, they see the situation. Left. Nine pass, head out. On one, on one. Ready? The important thing is that they're giving 110% and they can be honest with themselves. It's not a disgrace to come up short physically. If you are beaten by a better man, that's understandable. But if you don't give the 110%, this is the problem. The Tiger Cats camp afforded players living in Hamilton the option of staying at home or bunking in with the others at a local motel. Meals at the training table, however, were joint affairs. Veterans and rookies, elbow to elbow, bite for bite. And for some hopefuls, their only taste of what pro football might have been. While the Tiger Cats were digesting their daily grind of training camp, not many miles away, the Toronto Argonauts were holed up at York University. They had a big camp, almost twice the size of Hamilton. And leading the coaching staff on the long hopeful road to a Grey Cup is Toronto's repeat performance field boss, Leo Cahill. I think when you got a veteran team, it's a little bit different to this when you're, when you're first starting in again. I think now it's a orientation period where they not only learn fundamentals, but they learn to know the coaches and the terminology and the playbook and everything is so completely new and different that uh, we really need training camp. Character means an awful lot to me as far as a football player is concerned, and uh, you don't really get to know a person and his character until you've had a chance to be exposed to him for a while, and uh, we've got to have some people that have the character and the long lasting type of uh, attitude that uh, you know there's three seasons up here there's a exhibition season the regular season and the uh, and the playoffs and, and we've got to be ready in all three seasons not only physically uh, but emotionally and uh, and that character fits into the emotional part of the thing go 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 that's the way to come back boy that's the baby that's the way to come back for the all football right, and catch it. All right, Kane, that looked good. I, I thought that when I left the Argonauts the last time that we were pointed in the right direction and had the right kind of people. And my first impression of this group here is it's one of satisfaction because they work very hard and they've been through three coaches in three or four years. And, uh, you know, it could be one of those things like, oh, here we go again. But uh, we've had a But you got to take him into that area. Do it now. Okay, let's go red, right. Second. A fellow knows in his own heart 50, whether he can do the job. Uh, very seldom do you have that decision to make because there's generally a, a fairly uh, clear cut uh, line between those people that you keep and those that you don't. Uh, for example, we had. Uh, Earlier, after the first week of practice, we had three or four fellas come in and uh, say, Coach, there's just no sense of us staying here because they see the competition, they see the situation. Left. Nine pass, head out. On one, on one. Ready? The important thing is that they're giving 110% and they can be honest with themselves. It's not a disgrace to uh, come up short physically. If you are beaten by a better man, that's understandable. But if you don't give the 110%, this is the problem. The Tiger Cats camp afforded players living in Hamilton the option of staying at home or bunking in with the others at a local motel. Meals at the training table, however, were joint affairs. Veterans and rookies, elbow to elbow, bite for bite. And for some hopefuls, their only taste of what pro football might have been. 
While the Tiger Cats were digesting their daily grind of training camp, not many miles away, the Toronto Argonauts were holed up at York University. They had a big camp, almost twice the size of Hamilton, and leading the coaching staff on the long hopeful road to a Grey Cup is Toronto's repeat performance field boss, Leo Cahill. I think when you got a veteran team, it's a little bit different to this when you're, when you're first starting in again. I think now it's a orientation period where they not only learn fundamentals, but they learn to know the coaches and the terminology and the playbook and everything is so completely new and different that uh, we really need training camp. How you moving? Character means an awful lot to me as far as a football player is concerned, and uh, you don't really get to know a person and his character until you've had a chance to be exposed to him for a while, and uh, we've got to have some people that have the character and the long lasting type of uh, attitude that uh, you know there's three seasons up here there's an exhibition season the regular season and the uh, and the playoffs and, and we've got to be ready in all three seasons not only physically uh, but emotionally and uh, and that character fits into the emotional part of the thing go 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 that's the way to come back all right that's the way to that's the way to come back for the right, football and catch it. All right, Kane, that looked good. I, I thought that when I left the Argonauts the last time that we were pointed in the right direction and had the right kind of people. And my first impression of this group here is it's one of satisfaction because they work very hard. And they've been through three coaches in three or four years. And, uh, you know, it could be one of those things like, oh, here we go again. But uh, we've had a lot of cooperation. They're physically in pretty good shape, and they're putting a great effort out. So, uh, flank or right? Hey, Mark, turn out, get across. 20, quick trap. Set on set. Ready? Quick. Drop off like a drop that pass. What do you got, George? 20 quick press. Good. Yeah. Stop! Ah, right, leg in. Okay, that's the line now, minute, man. Hey, John. One of the problems we've been having. On the trap last now, night, you squeezed it too far and they lost it. With the angle that we're stepping on. I want one right, step now, down and that's, that's it. it. Man, let's go uh, flank or right. Sprint right. Good. Set on set. Ready? Quick. I don't think there's too much new in football, but it's the day-to-day -day handling of the things that happen uh, when you have 35 characters uh, that you're responsible for that all have their own personal problems, and so you just adjust as you go. Yeah, but still, when I get to penetration, I want to get to How about deep as the deepest back? Now you talking! Well, that was the story as far as training camps are concerned. Now it's the real thing. And the real thing the Argos certainly know because they trail the Hamilton Tiger Cats 20 to 3. We'll be taking a look at some of the highlights of tonight's first half with Russ Jackson and Don Chevry in just a moment. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Ken Gibson. He's one of those men who has the incredible ability to discover new talent and take it and mold it into success. And I'm the fella that ought to know. Ken Gibson started as a producer introducing new faces on a series called Let's Go. And it's there that the Irish Rovers first met him. And since that time, Ken and the boys have kind of blended together into a friendship that makes working together a pleasure. And a pleasure which we hope that you all can share. I could safely say that if any man has the formula to help make people a wee bit happy, it's your man, Ken Gibson. Donors love life. Be a Red Cross blood donor. Be a 
regular blood donor. From the Football Hall of Fame, meet Tony Golab, the golden boy of Ottawa. Twice shot down in battle, he returned to star with Ottawa till retirement in 1951. Learn more about Tony Golab and other great CFL stars at the Football Hall of Fame, Hamilton. This is the night in Hamilton and the week in Hamilton. They are honoring the former mayor, Victor Kennedy Copps, who suffered a serious illness two years ago and has not fully recovered. His wife, Geraldine Copps, is here, along with his brother, Bill Copps, who is a CBC News reporter in Toronto. There is Bill Copps. And the thought, memory of Vic Copps, very much with the fans here in Hamilton tonight. The fans, of course, in Toronto are very concerned about the Argonauts, Russ. I might say what's new, but I know that Leo Cahill certainly can't be pleased with what has happened so far. 13 penalties, 91 yards, resulting have been a major factor. Well, I think that has to be one of the big features of this particular half because 13 penalties for 91 yards and Hamilton only having three for 19 has to be very important, especially leading to the second touchdown. There were three big ones. But Mike Harris has to be one of the big reasons why Hamilton's hit. He's made three outstanding catches. And on this first one, early in the quarter, the second time Hamilton had the ball, he got in behind number six and just caught it over Ward Smith's head. He kicked Ward Smith in the stomach as he went down and actually led to the first field goal. And again, one of the clues for Hamilton now is they've got themselves a field goal kicker who completes these situations for them where they get the three points and don't come out with nothing. But I really think that the situation has been Mike. He's made some great catches for them, and he's put a lot of pressure on that right side of the Toronto defense. They're working over there. They're putting a lot of pressure on them. But also fumbles, penalties, fumbles have hurt them. It's been a situation where here's a good play. Both Parrish and Wilson, number 54 and 66, get around here and get good blocks. McGraw has a good game, but Sam Britz comes across and knocks that ball loose. And this is the opportune type of team that you have with Hamilton. They did it all last year through the last half. Lewis Porter picks it up and brings it back, and they go on to score a touchdown from here. But the situation is that you can't have all those penalties. You can't get good offensive blocking by two linemen who both get around the corner, do a good job for you, and then you cough up the ball and the other team gets it. But Harris then made another outstanding catch, and he made the good catch, but he made just a super throw by Jimmy Jones. He got good protection here. He stood right in the pocket, did a super job, laid it out over Bennett, number 20, and as they say, they're working on that right side of that Toronto defense, and he caught it. And from the end zone, We'll see it go down here now behind Jimmy Jones. Bennett seems to give it a problem here. He reaches out. He's in good position. You can't blame him. But Harris, six foot four, just reaches up and did a super job of catching that ball. But later on, you know, they go on, and Jimmy Edwards, he's had a good half, too. He's run the ball 10 times for 51 yards. They say they like to get the ball to him maybe 18 times. And he scored the touchdown, the last touchdown, the second for Hamilton, after Harris made another real good catch. But it's interesting to watch the particular touchdown that they do score with Edwards because the problem is that you must get support from these defensive backs. Nettles, and out of the picture here, we got number six. And if they don't give you support, the defensive line is going to go down low, and you see both Nettles and Ward Smith, number six, go to the outside, and over there, there is nobody. And when your line goes down low like that and the defensive line gives up, down near the one or two yard line, those defensive backs must come up and support. And if those defensive backs don't come up and support, you have a distinct problem. And we saw there that Edwards, once the offensive defensive line were down in the ground playing groundhogs together, then all he did was jump over top and there's no back to meet him. And that creates the problem. Well, Russ, uh, the Argonauts have got their work cut out for them. They've just made too many mistakes. They've taken those penalties. You said they fumbled the football. It could be jitters. A lot of these players playing in their first game, they want to look good and they want to earn a full-time job with this team. But the Hamilton Tiger Cats, let's not take it away from them. They play the usual kind of football you see here. Tough, aggressive, defensive-oriented football with exciting offensive plays as well. All right, it's almost time for the third quarter. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a moment. A super new album, 20 great instrumental hits. The Ventures, Ernie Field, The Shantae, The Stringalongs, and Dave Baby Cortez. 20 instrumental greats of the 60s, The Incredible Bongo Band, Santo and Johnny, The Virtues, and The Chaps. 
Remember V. Bumbo and the Stinger. Rocket Rebel, the Sputniks, and Bill Justice. This incredible album will bring back a lot of great memories. Rebel Rouser, 20 instrumental greats, $5.99 from KTEL, page $6.99, also on cassette. Available at Woolco, Woolworth, Zellers, Metropolitan, Towers, Sam the Record Man, Gambles, and McClouds. Also at the Bay, Woodward's, and Eaton's. Don Chevrier with Russ Jackson and Tom McKee at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. Here come the Tiger Cats to a thunderous roar of approval from their fans as they have amassed a 20-3 halftime lead. And statistically, here's how it happened. All Hamilton, total offense 177-90. The indicator that does not show there, the penalty factor, 91 yards against Toronto, 19 for Hamilton. The Tiger Cats leading in first downs, everything but rushing right down the line against the Toronto Argonauts in this ball game tonight. And very important as well, two turnovers given up by the fumble-prone Toronto football team in the first half. Two converted touchdowns and two field goals by Dave Pegg, the newcomer, that provided Hamilton with this 20-3 lead. And it will be interesting to see uh, Leo Cahill back as Argonaut head coach, 1977, making his debut tonight, will cope with changes that might be able to get the Toronto football team moving. I'll tell you, Hamilton hasn't given them very much. They've covered defensively just the way Bob Shaw asked them to. Well, I think you have to give Toronto uh, a little, a few marks in support of the fact that they had the injuries we talked about early in the program. Vestaya certainly has a problem because Sorensen has had those three holding penalties, and when they put Clark out there, he had a penalty. And we see at the end of the first quarter, the Saskatchewan Rough Rider, my old buddy Ronnie Lancaster, is throwing a touchdown pass out there, and they're leading 8 to nothing over the BC Lions. Yeah. Missouri got that touchdown for Saskatchewan. He got one in the Grey Cup game, I recall, too, against the Ottawa Rough Riders last November. So Calgary at BC and Saskatchewan at Winnipeg. Now the other opening games. Now we'll get that clarified because we got a little mix up on those two teams playing out there tonight. But Saskatchewan's on top by a touchdown from Missouri. Here in Hamilton, we certainly have the right teams. The Argonauts of the Tiger Cats. What's new? <laughs> <laughs> Here's one of the t-shirts indicating that indeed Leo is back. I want to know whether that's a guy or a girl. <laughs> oh, it's a guy. A young guy. <laughs> yes, very young. And resistance now with the ball teed up. Edwards and Shaw to receive. The Ticats get the ball and they get the win to begin the third quarter. Watch the bounce here, Dave Shaw. He's got it back on the five yard line. 15, near the 20, he's taken down. Paul Bennett, number 20, brought him down for Toronto. So the Cats will start deep with the win at their own 20-yard line. Well, they don't want to kick that ball to Jimmy Edwards any more than he has to have it. And they line up on the hash mark away from him and kick the shot. There is Gene Clark, part-time singer, now full-time football player with the Toronto Argonauts. He's singing a little bit there. There we have it for you. Saskatchewan still leads, folks, but against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, a team regarded to be one of the powers in the West. They still may be. It's early in that game, first quarter over. Here it's 20 to 3 for Hamilton. Edwards on the pitch out from Jones, fights his way, literally for five yards to Comet Burley, number 62. The left tackle finally stopped him. Well, Nettles is so quick out there. He follows that pitch out. He's reading those guards, and when they come out there, he's with it. And Edwards, we've mentioned it many times, has those quick feet, and Nettles is just overrunning him, and he's coming back inside and making that five yards. You can't fault Nettles the way he's coming down the line. The linemen are protecting him. He's coming there free, but Edwards is beating him one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if we can get a shot of Bruce Smith. There's his back in a while. We'll check uh, the front of him with the uh, shirt all tied up on a hot night here in Hamilton. Jones on second down, way outside for Evanston. He's got a first down, Hamilton, at the 32-yard line. Jim Marshall, the right cornerback, number 15, forced him out. Well, that's Terry Evanston catching his first one tonight, and there's a shot of Bruce Smith. A uh, little warm. He's got the bare midriff exposed tonight in the third quarter in Hamilton. In fact, it is very warm tonight. 
Well, they were expecting a lot of rain here oh. tonight and throughout the day, but nothing's happened, and the humidity is well up there. Walker's got his shirt tied up, too. Tiger Cats have got the Argonauts all tied up at 20 to 3. First down play, Jones to Harrison on the exchange. He reaches the 37. That'll be good for five. Nettles, who's back into the ball game after being shaken up in the second quarter. And he Comet Burley combined for the Toronto tackle. Well, so far, Russ, things do not seem to be changing. The Argonauts went out of here last year, missed the playoffs. Starting off behind 17 points, you beginning of 1977. <laughs> you have to keep reminding me. I'm sure you haven't forgotten. Wow. Jones almost had it picked off, a gift that was turned back with thanks by Ward Smith. I think he was so surprised to see that ball come at him. Actually, Jones went back. He had good time. He sort of caught the arm to throw it once. He wanted to throw it here, and then he hung onto it and threw it. And by this time, the receiver's skull root had broken down past Ward Smith. And Ward just stood there and had the interception. And those are the things that make a ball game. They need a big play right now, and that could have been a great turnover and brought Toronto back in this early part of the second half. So now they send back Kirk and Bennett near the 20 yard line to receive this punt from Ken Clark. Having a great night punting. He's got the following wind here in the third quarter. This is not one of his better ones. Moving up fourth, the 30 yard line is Paul Bennett. He reaches the 40, still going at the 45, out of bounds there near the 46 yard line. Take it out by John Martini Dutch by John Martini have to watch this Hamilton defense now and see if they play a little more conservative whether they're still going to come with those linebackers and I think they've had the success with it and I think you'll see Kent Carter if Chuck wants to sprint Chuck is still in there he's going to come in and put some pressure on this is Neil Lumpkin He's getting good yardage again, better than five. I'm not sure how many times they've gone to him. I think maybe three. And uh, I'm a little surprised, Doug, or uh, Russ, they haven't gone more. Doug Stone and John Pickett, our statisticians, verify. He has three carries for him. Well, certainly in the last couple of exhibition games, he was the guy that was their main ball carrier on the ground. They were very pleased. He was getting 60, 70 yards a game, averaging maybe six, seven yards. Certainly had five carries so far, 21 yards. Okay. Not up to the standard we expected from him in this opening ball game. Here's Chuck Ely, second down. Peter Mueller. Mueller fights his way inside the Hamilton 40-yard line. They'll give him a 40. Goal through Gary Shaw, who finally got enough of Peter Mueller to stop him. Well, again, Mueller seems to be the guy that's catching all the passes tonight. He's playing that tight end spot, and he's just moving in there. The linebackers are getting back deep enough and letting him come out and just find the open spot. The two light, Mike linebackers inside are moving to the outside. Ritz number one of them and Berryman the other one. And Peter, putting on that extra weight, gets a few yards after he catches the ball. Here's Ely on the draw to Lumsden. Red well by Hamill. And Mike Sample's hung in there. He got him first. And he finally came to rest at the 40-yard line. No game. Mike Sample's having his usual great night for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. He anchors that defensive line, which is three men can become four or five, depending on what the Tiger Cats do with their linebackers from time to time. They've played four minutes in the third quarter. It is still 20 to three for Hamilton. Here's Ely, a second down key play. Interference is called. Yes, at the 29 yard line. The catch has been made down there. A good reception by Donnie Quick Draw McGraw. So either way, the Argonauts get the first down. Gary Shaw moved early on it. Well, number 47, Britt's in here. He comes in and he puts some pressure on, but he's picked up real well by the offensive line. He comes in here, the guard stays right in there, picks him up, and they get the ball away, and we get the interference call, and they're working over the middle there, trying to make the completions into the tight end. Look who is there again, right at the quarterback. Mike Samples, number 62. So the Tiger Cats into a 20 to 3 lead with the Argonauts on the move here. Four minutes and 16 seconds into the third quarter at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. We'll be right back after we pause for just a moment. CBC Tuesday. It's All-Star Baseball time again as the National and American Leagues carry on a tradition that began when the legendary Babe Ruth hit the home run that won the first All-Star game in 1933. 
The game and style of coverage may have changed, but not the action and excitement. As the best go against the best, watch the All-Star Baseball game on CBC. Next Tuesday night. Lifestyles are changing, and so are GMC trucks, like the new Gaucho model that can take large loads and also be lots of fun. Like GMC pickups that can step out at night and work all day. And GMC Suburban, much more than transportation for the whole gang. Great ways to go anywhere by GMC. Argonaut came out with a quick call.
throttle 50 at the 47. Well, Don, that's the first time they've worked on this right side, and you mentioned that Mike hadn't been thrown to. They've been putting Skullroot and even on this right side all the time. Skullroot just ran down the field and ran right by the defensive man. There was nobody even touching him here. You can see they're both well behind him. If you had somebody with some speed there made the good catch on the run, they might have gone all the way, but they've been working on that defensive right over there, and that was a 28-yard pass play to Laurie Skullroot. But that's the first time they worked this side of the defense. Both he and Eben were open on the play. Jones now 8 for 14, 145 yards. This is Jimmy Edwards going nowhere. Nope. Came in to break that play up for Toronto. And there's Chuck Ely, the starting quarterback who's gone all the way for the Toronto Argonauts tonight. His cause not aided by a long parade of penalties against the Argonauts on offense in the first half. Gordy Knowlton, number 17, whom we talked about earlier, does a good job of coming in here. He gets good penetration. Now Edwards again has the option of running inside or outside. Number 68, the right guard Butler pulled out on him, but Knowlton just did a good job of containing, getting off the block, and getting Edwards. Second down, 11 yards to go. Jones sets the throw. For Skullrood, tipped into the hands of the Toronto defender, Eric Harris. Harris can go, heading for the open side, back in the middle, and taken down at midfield. Bill Harrison finally stopped him. Trying to hit Skullroot again, coming back where they had some success. And we see Ray Nettles working over here, and Skullroot is actually the one. He's in between the two defensive backs, and he tips it up over top of number 27, Richardson. And Harris comes down with the interception, has a good return. He gets a good block just about here. We're going to see him set it up right there on number 54, Bart Evans. But he set that up very well. Here is Donnie McGraw, lost the ball, but the whistle had sounded, picked up maybe two yards. McGraw does appear to be a little fumble prone, Russ. He's lost a lot of footballs tonight. This one, fortunately for McGraw and the Argonauts, happened as the whistle had sounded. So it's 20 to 4 for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. We're midway in the third quarter at Ivor Wind City, and we'll be right back. Here is the shape of a 76 full-size Buick LeSabre. And here, the shape of the new 77 LeSabre, resized, trimmer, yet has... a 76 full-size Buick LeSabre. And here, the shape of the new 77 LeSabre, resized, trimmer, yet has plenty of seating comfort here and here, and with over 25% more trunk space. A new LeSabre in the Buick tradition. Still a full-sized car you'll enjoy driving. It's the look of success. Buick LeSabre. You're looking good, Buick. Tomorrow night, across the National Network, viewers will see Pittsburgh against Montreal. Dave Van Horn and Duke Snyder there for that one in Southern Ontario. Tom McKee, Tony Kubek, and I'll be at Comiskey Park for the White Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. So in Ontario, watch that game across the network, Pittsburgh at Montreal. Tonight, the Jays trail Detroit 2-1, playing the seventh. Second down, eight and a half yards to go for Chuck Ely and the Toronto Argonauts. He's got some room out there. Carter now pressures him. Dumps it out to Neil Lumsden. Pardon me, Alex Morris that was. And he likely has a first down there at the Hamilton 45. And Sample was shaken up, trying to get up for Hamilton. He's still down. Now, Samples has been having a great night, and they put the pressure on. He tried to get in with the good pressure. And Clark, I think, got a pretty good block on him, number 50. And there certainly is Sean. Martini's going to have to come in. But 62 came in, and Carter is a little late. And we see him come across here. Here's number 50. He seemed to get caught between Neil Lumsden and number 50, Gene Clark. And then Lumsden got up off the ground and caught the pass. But he got caught between the two of them. Lumsden's waiting for him. And it's actually Lumsden that gets him in that thigh area. And I'm sure that's where the problem was. But he's walking off the field now, and he's fine. But good play by Lumsden after making a good block or helping with the block. Got up and caught the little outlet pass for the first down. That was Alex Morris, uh, Russ, uh, who caught that pass. And uh, that hit by Lumsden and by Clark. And uh, you see the limp as Mike Sample slowly makes his way out to the bench. First down and 10 from the 45 of Hamilton. There's Mr. Tiger Cat. Mishandled football. Who's got it? 
Argo ball. They got it back around the 47. Chuck Ely lost control of the football, may never have had firm control. Brame right there ready to pounce on it. Ely recovered it for Toronto. Well, you can bet with that heat down there that that ball's a little slippery at times, and certainly you have the perspiration coming down from the center and so on, and that becomes a problem. And Chuck, sometimes he never did get the ball from the center, and he never didn't did. ever see it. But that's the problem on it. Same when it's cold, it's just as bad when it's hot like this. <laughs> This time he gets the ball back from Al McClain. He's in trouble. Bales out of the pocket. Ely to a wide open receiver. Neil Lumsden. Lumsden to the Hamilton 22-yard line. Well, there's just good experience on Chuck Ely's part because as he got out of the pocket with the three-man rush, the good three-man rush forced him out of the pocket here. What he does is he goes out there, he stays behind the line, and both Hamilton defenders come up on him. We'll see both of them come up in here, and they leave Lumsden all alone. Instead of one of them putting the force on, and I'm sure one of them is taught, if he gets out of there, you force, you stay back. They both went, and left Lumsden all alone. First down play, Ely sprints left. He'll go with the ball to the Hamilton 14-yard line. That would give him nine yards. Tim Berryman and Kent Carter were there for Hamilton defensively. Now, this is what Bob Shaw talked about this morning, too, as he said that they must keep Ely in the pocket, and they had worked a great deal on the quick count and trying to contain him. And basically, in that first half, they did a pretty good job. But now Chuck is getting outside, and he puts pressure on you, not only throwing the ball, but running with it. They go into a second down short yardage offense. Tony Morrow brings the play, and it's to go to Tony McGraw. McGraw looks to have the first down as he skitters sideways along the 12-yard line. Sam Britz made the stop for Hamilton. We've got 4.49 left in the third quarter. The Tiger Cats lead the Argonauts by 16 at 20 to 4. They're looking well, at Lily not having any problem handling the ball this time. And in short yardage, he just gives it to McGraw following in there. And number 21 had a pretty good shot at him, but just couldn't pull him down. Steve Jelly playing that rover spot. Had the shot, but McGraw came inside with good power and made the first down. There's the backup setter, Al McClain, playing for the injured Stu Francis. All kinds of motion right. Here's the ball back to Chuck Ely. He's rocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. He was being pursued by number 59, Pat Donnelly, at defensive end of the left side for Hamilton. The gain is going to be three. And there's a great peelback block. Ely getting out of there and getting in that foot race with Donnelly, but Donnelly is coming after him, and right about now, we're going to see a white shirt come in there and just do a super job of peeling back right in there. Number 25, McGraw, coming back and making a good peelback on Donnelly so he doesn't get a shot at Ely. Mike Samples confirms that is a twisted knee that's causing him some pain. If they get the offense going here for Hamilton, look for Schumann to come into the game as well. Jimmy Jones will get a rest. Inside the 10 at the 9, Argonauts for the second down, needing points to get back in this ball game. Chuck Ely forced the run again, contained just at the one-yard line. They rolled him back, but he should have enough for the first down. Well, again, Steve Jelly stopped him, Russ. Well, again, if you don't get that force in there and you let him outside, and again, we see number 41 who's supposed to have the outside contain inside Chuck Ely on that replay. And if he's inside, that means Ely's got the outside all by himself. And this is what's hurting Hamilton right now. They did a good job in the first half. This half, they have not been able to contain him. Bob Macaridi's hit on a field goal. It's now 11-7, Saskatchewan over Winnipeg. And their opener at the Winnipeg Stadium in the second quarter. Toronto for the one-yard line will get three cracks, barring fumble for a touchdown. Here's number one. A flag flies. McGraw is over. But let's see what the penalty mark is about. A little friction between Lewis Porter and McGraw out there as they were fighting on that goal line after McGraw had scored. Hamilton's offside. Dave Shaw, the touchdown, of course, will stand as the Argos decline. So Donnie McGraw gets Toronto's first TD of the year. Well, McGraw just following the blocking in there. He takes it. If we look from the end zone here, everybody's just piling in there, and he got hit there by Lewis Porter who couldn't hold him out, and he got into the end zone on the first shot, as they called it, 
And there's a little hesitation here by McGraw, and Ian Porter had a few words after that. But McGraw's been placed in here, John Harvey being let go, and certainly McGraw being a fine that came up sort of as a free agent to the Toronto Argonauts and has made it as the running back. And resistance point after attempt, it is good. So now the Toronto Argonauts are suddenly back in the ball game. They trail the Tiger Cats by 9, 20 to 11, 342 remaining in the third quarter. Again, there are a lot of situations you have to look at with Stu Francis out of there just on that center back on the convert there. It was almost thrown back too high and too hard for Chuck Ely to handle. And this is going to be a situation that we're going to have to look at as we go along on not only converts and maybe field goal attempts, but third down punts. Donnie McGraw, who scores this touchdown, we see it here, came from the University of Houston. As I said before, he was cut a couple of weeks ago, and ironically, the back starts the first game and gets the first touchdown. He made a great block for us to keep this series going, as you pointed out right, in the previous play. He back on Donnelly and really rocked him. So the Argonauts will kick off near hash marks, 45-yard line, trailing by nine at 20 to 11. Coming down to Shaw at the eight-yard line. Dave Shaw underway for Hamilton. 20, up the middle, 30, cut down across the 30-yard line. Eric Harris, number 16, met him for Toronto. He brought it back 24 yards. Hamilton first down from the 32 now. Well, we talked about important series late in that half, in the first half, with Hamilton having the ball. And this is when where Hamilton wants to move the ball now. Toronto has been on the offense now most of this third quarter. Got themselves a single point on a missed field goal attempt by the Big Z. And now has got the touchdown to put them within nine points. So Hamilton wants to now assert themselves and move that ball. Jones, like Ely, has gone all the way at quarterback. Jimmy Edwards. They have him taped early at the 30-yard line. He'll lose a couple. Burley and Walker there to make the tackles for Toronto. A Comet Burley, number 62, and Cornelius Walker, 74. Uh, Burley, number 62, you won't find a guy that works any harder than him. He just does a super job all the time at practice. Just is an excellent football player and a super guy. But Toronto called for offside again, and the penalty starting to come back to haunt them as they did in that first half and giving them a first and five situation up at about their 37 yard line but number 62 Burley is just a, a super individual even in the calisthenics out there he works harder than anybody and just knows what he has to do when he jogs up there's a stopwatch with him and he times himself all the time <laughs> a race against the clock for constant efforts to improve here's Jimmy Edwards well, he certainly has did not improved. He's back to his form of 76. Wayne Smith hits it with the 45. Not before Edwards gets a first down for Hamilton. We've got 2.44 to play here in the third quarter. The Argonauts have come back with one TD, but they still trail by nine, and we'll be right back after this. Well, I suppose people are hungry because there's not enough food to go around. The fact is that there's more than enough food for everyone grown in the world each year, but it goes to those who can pay the price. Well, we have the food, and they need it. And there's more of them than us, and that could cause trouble someday. Food is a precious resource for all of us, and handouts for the hungry are not a practical solution in the long run. Those who don't have enough must be helped to grow what they need. We should buy things like coffee and bananas, that kind of stuff from the poorer countries, and then they could take the money to buy the food they need. That's the way the world works now, but it doesn't seem to work for the hungry. They need the encouragement to grow their own food. You can help through your church's World Development and Relief Fund. Well, next Tuesday, it's All-Star Baseball time on CBC. The stars of the National League meet the stars of the American League at Yankee Stadium. You can see it right here on CBC TV. Tony Kubek and Joe Garagiola with the 1977 All-Star game. Well, a baseball tomorrow night for you. Pittsburgh and Montreal, Chicago and Toronto, depending on where you live across the country on Major League Baseball 77. Right now, CFL football from Hamilton. First down play for Jimmy Jones. It is intercepted. At the 55-yard line, Toronto Argonauts, Eric Harris there to bring it in. That's his second pickoff. 
And the Argonauts get a major turnover with 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Okay, on that particular play, the good pressure by the outside here with Walker throwing the good pressure on him now and getting into him and forcing Jones to throw up over top of him and he overthrew Skullroot again and that's the two interceptions in this half have both come that way where he's overthrown Skullroot and Eric Harris, the newcomer with the Toronto team playing that left cornerback spot has made the two interceptions. Harris from Memphis State, 6'3", 188, a major signing for Toronto. From the 54-yard line, this is Ely. Sprint drive, keeps the ball. Cannot strip the first tackle at the Hamilton 54, thrown by Pat Donnelly, and that limits his game to about two. Well, there's no question. That was a run all the way. He just sprinted right down the line there and took off. There was no pretense of throwing that ball. It was going to be run with the quarterback, and they just didn't get up in front of him. Well, the bird has done it again. Mark Fidrich on the mound for the Detroit Tigers, beating the Toronto Blue Jays 2-1 to one tonight at Tiger Stadium. The Jays go on to Chicago to meet the Western leaders, the White Sox, tomorrow. We'll have it on CBC in Ontario for you. Oh, a hard tackle there. Lunch it takes it. A flag is down. Ball came loose. It goes over to Hamilton. Well, and the flag is going to be illegal procedure against the Toronto Argonauts. Peter Mueller. Trying to get off the line of scrimmage, left a little early, and they called it, and here we have that turnover again with good hard running. But Peter Mueller, we'll see at the top of the screen now, just turns upfield a little early and is trying to get out away from the linebacker. The illegal procedure is called now when he dumps it off to Lumsden. Here we have the good hard running by Neal, but he tends to straighten up. He comes off this man here very well, doesn't have good control of the ball, and he loses it right here with Larry Brain making the good hit, and the ball pops loose. It was Pat Donnelly who picked it up, and uh, that play will stand for Hamilton from the 50-yard line as they gleefully decline the illegal procedure penalty against Toronto. Well, back-to-back -back turnovers snuff out that Argonaut chance to get closer to the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Harrison, the ball bounces off, and he didn't even see it. And the Tiger Cats were very fortunate to get the football back. Well, that's one of the few times that they put Skullroot and Eben to the left side because they're putting Harris and Terry Evanson over there and working on that secondary, as we mentioned earlier, and they got the pitch out, and it seemed like Edwards got ahead of the ball. The ball seemed to hit him in the back. He seemed to be well ahead of the ball, and actually it's Harris, and he didn't even look like he knew the ball was coming. And they're fortunate. Here we have Jimmy Jones alert because that ball laid on the ground sometime before he actually got to it. It was available. Second and ten. Swings it out, and Edwards let it go. He heard the thundering footsteps. <laughs> well, some people would say that's here in the footsteps, and they definitely were coming. He was putting a little move on before it actually happened. And we see the minute flag up there with about 19 seconds to go with Hamilton forced to punt to the Toronto Argonauts, and we've got a ball game now, John. Don? We sure have. Those big boots that made all the noise in the area mm. of the receiver were in the possession of Gordon Olton. You not only hear some, or, uh, hear some of those footsteps, they actually feel them. Are they walking on you again, Tom? Oh, they're getting close. I've spot them off so far. Just be careful. Don't get hurt. Be nice to Gene Mack, whatever you do. Here's Clark with a booming punt with the win. Back inside the five-yard line. Fumble out of bounds. The Argonauts will start right there. Bennett lost the ball. And that was the final play of the third quarter. A 57-yard boomer by Hamilton putter Ken Clark. With the result of the Toronto Argonauts, where they change ends, will have the win, but a long way to go to start working on the nine-point deficit. At the end of the third quarter, then, the score is Hamilton 20, Toronto 11. Hello. Enjoy seeing Karen Kane and Frank Augustin of the National Ballet. So much of life is seen, yet each year thousands of accidents in the home and industry cause permanent vision damage or blindness. Wear eye protection on the job, in sports or at home, wherever there's a chance of an eye accident. 
Teach your child how to handle sharp objects and think about eye safety when buying toys. Eye problems do not correct themselves. Have a regular eye checkup for yourself and your family. The CNIB will welcome inquiries about your eyes. We begin the fourth quarter with Russ Jackson and Tom McKee. This is Don Chevrier. I don't know if you'll be amused, Russ. They tell me the guys in the press box, a little bored, I suppose, at halftime, wrote a petition up and they all signed it saying they want you back as head coach. Now, Leo's got a pretty tough start with that going on, hasn't he? No way for me, Don. <laughs> they could no. take the petition a mile long. Your side. <laughs> I'm happy up here. <laughs> your side and sealed for 77 right here I've on CBC television. got an unbreakable television. contract with CBC. <laughs> Argo starting deep. Lumsden gets them out of there as he did so often last year. Deep at their end of the field. A good burst out near the 10-yard line. He picked up eight. Well, both Parrish and Wilson, this is their strength now. They feel they can block straight ahead, and they fire right out. And this is where Neal has been gaining a lot of those yards. And they run behind the two of them on that right side of the offensive line. That was their strength in college. And they feel they have to learn to be good pass protectors for the quarterback, especially on the straight drop back. Second down, about two. Again, Lumsden. Ely kept the football. Is rolling, literally, across the 15-yard line. Now it comes loose. I believe the whistle had gone. Well, here's a call by Ely that he uses very well. He just put Lumsden in there again, and Lumsden took off like a trade train. He just kept the ball, but Lumsden pulled him a little off balance as he went out of there. Otherwise, he might have gained a lot of yards because no one in that Tiger Cat defense seemed to know that he still had the ball, but Lumsden, with a good fake in there, seemed to pull Chuck into the inside and threw him off balance. wonder how long it would take him to get a touchdown rolling like that. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be here late. <laughs> There's a high pitch brought down by McGraw, and McGraw is in the area of the 23-yard line, about three yards away from the first down. He got seven yards. Cut down by Craig Jensen, a rookie defensive halfback. That's a good sign for the offense to move out from the shadow of their goalpost when they're down nine points. They know they can't give up anymore, and they've got to move that ball out before they give it up, and they've moved it out now with one first down, and they've got themselves a second and three situation. They've come all the way from the two. That's where Bennett stepped out of bounds. He lost the ball and a punt by Clark to end the third quarter. Here's McGraw again. And he's tracked down short of the first down by Pat Donnelly at defensive end, number 59. Argonauts have got a yard, maybe a yard and a half to go. And immediately, Leo Cahill sends in the punting team. He'll take no chances this early in the fourth quarter. Well, that's a sign of a good defense. You bend a little, but you don't give it away. And when you come up with those plays at a important part of the ball game like this it's very important for the Hamilton defense Schumann we see warming up and we may see him in this ball game although Jimmy Jones has had a pretty good ball game so far I would think that is only for exercise for Mr. Schumann there seems to be no reason to take Jones out low snap good kick with the win by Andrew Zushin. good hang time for the defenders to get downfield here's Dave Shaw he's quick and he bursts through there they finally track him down from behind around the 47 yard line Make it the 46. Alex Morris made the stop. Now that's again one of your problems when you have those long punch. You've got problems with coverage now, and he got pretty good hang time on that 59 yarder that time. But Sean Edwards back there give Hamilton a pretty good tandem in running back those third down punts. That is the Z's best effort tonight. 59 yards, and Hamilton from the 46 will start out trying to retain and add to a 20 to 11 lead with 12:41 to play in the football game. Line up in that eye formation behind Jimmy Jones. Harrison now sprints right, Edwards left. The pass comes left for Evanson. It was tipped by Jim Marshall. Boy, it's a good thing that Jimmy threw that a little high because Marshall had that thing set for the end zone. And if he'd had that down on target to Terry Evanson, I think that Jim Marshall might have picked that off and gone all the way. He's one of two former Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the Argonaut starting defensive secondary, Lauren Richardson being the other. A couple of BC Lions, Ray Nettles and Wayne Smith, former Lions, that is, are also in there for Toronto. Right now, there's a good look at Jim Marshall, number 15, as he backs away to his corner assignment against Terry Evanson. Second and 10, Hamilton, 46. Wide open, this time is Evanson. 
And he is hit around the 46 of Toronto, a big first down. I don't know where Marshall went on that play. Well, but again, Evanson you have him open. set up here, and Terry Evanson, if we can run it ahead, is out wide here. And Terry Evanson is the one who is going to put the move on Marshall. As he comes downfield, Marshall gets all turned around and giving him good protection here, forcing Wayne Smith to the outside, Edwards helping inside. Terry put a super move on him, thinking he was going to do that little out and down after running the out pattern, and Marshall took it and turned and fell down. Terry now is just dancing around saying, where's the ground? I want to find it. Well, Marshall came back uh, on the play after he was beaten, but he's been shaken up. Well, Don, that's a situation where as a defensive back, they run that little one at you, and you took a little gamble on it, and you say to yourself, okay, on the next one, he's probably going to do the out and down on me because they're thinking I'm going to really play him tight. And he did a little fake to the outside, which we couldn't see it. He went downfield, but then he turned it up, and Marshall really took off, figuring that Terry's going deep, and I'm going to get back with him, but Terry just cut it back to the inside after turning him upfield. Well, we talked about leg injuries, and there is another one belonging to Jim Marshall. Well, the pressure is here now, and as he's trying to cover on this turf here, the artificial turf now, in the bottom of the picture, he sort of slips himself here now, and this is when he actually hurts it. You can see him get up, and he's holding that ankle a little bit as he's trying to get back into the play. But that turf will do a lot for you if you dig in out there. They're putting Wayne Allison in, and uh, he's on the corner now. As I recall, he never played that position very much. No, Larry Utek was the backup corner, and they had Ward Smith as possibly in the corner, and Allison going in at Rover, but right now they've got him out there. New roll for him. The play does not go his way. It is Edwards across the 45-yard line, down to about the 42 for a gain of four. Cornelius Walker tripped him up. Well, the difference is playing that cornerback spot. You have to be able to play man-to-man because -man you're alone out there so much, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them come back right now and say, okay, we're going to test number 12. They're going to put either Terry Evanson or Mike Even out here and say, he's going to cover you man-to-man, -man and we're going to get the ball to you. Four minutes gone in the fourth quarter. 20-11, to 11, Hamilton in the lead. Second and six. Jones with room. Now it fills in. Oh, he gets punched there. A hard blow from Ray Nettles, the middle linebacker, who dinged him at the... 38, and I think Jones has been shaking up, Russ. He's getting up slowly, at least. Well, Nettles, that headhunter, I can remember he played for years with a feather in his helmet trying to hit people, but he certainly came back and rocked Jimmy Jones, and it was a good, solid hit just short of that first down, and now one of the big decisions with the score, Hamilton 20, Toronto 11, is the Hamilton team going to go for it? CBC Thursday. Start the night with Barney Miller. Thank you. <laughs> Inspector, we need a list of the items that are missing. Oh, sure, yes. Well, just sit down here for a minute, Miss Lane, while we'll uh, check out your goodies. Followed by Mash. What's the holdup? That lady over there is trying to evict some spirits. Does have a ghost of a chance? Watch Mash and Barney Miller Thursday, starting at 8. here at the Argonaut bench we take a look down here at Jim Marshall who's just got his uh, uh, tape off his left foot and there seems to be quite a bit of pain on the outside of that left ankle maybe it's a bone bruise maybe it's a sprain but nothing more serious than that in the way of a break let's hope it's not as bad as the official that got hurt earlier tonight yes unfortunately he broke his leg Scott McBrien very early in the ball game and a collision on the far sideline Hamilton not gambling they're kicking Park in punt formation, kicks from the 45-yard line into the wind, a super pot. It's going all the way. One bounce over the fence, ground rule double for one point. <laughs> you do the baseball in Chicago tomorrow night, Chevy. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Not too often you get that oblong football to bounce over the fence like that. He, he sailed it, didn't he? I tell you, the Jays would like to have a few guys like that. <laughs> ben Clark. That point gives Hamilton a 10-point lead at 21-11. to 11. 
Well, that's an interesting point because now it forces Toronto. They must score more than the converted touchdown and a field goal unless they would attempt a two-point conversion. But I'm sure Toronto would be very happy to go out of here with a tie, if not a win tonight. They have 10 minutes and 19 seconds remaining. There you see it, a 10-point difference between these two arch rivals. The rivalry unparalleled anywhere in the CFL, except perhaps by Edmonton Calgary. Donnie McGraw, 45-yard line, lost the football. They rule that the Argonauts picked it up, and he is close to a first down. Well, again, we have those two offensive people, the two guys they're talking about here, coming out and doing a good job. And they get around the corner, and we'll see that Hamilton has no pressure. Here they both get completely around the corner, and you can't play football on an end run like that. you got a little guy like number 17 coming up there, Shaw, Gary Shaw, and he's not going to take on a 260-pound tackle. So you must get up there with more pressure earlier in the play to stop them coming around. But when you get both the guard and the tackle around, you've got problems. Second down on inches. Could this be the long bomb? Ely will keep it himself. No receivers available. Runs into that wall on the far side, but has the Toronto first down with a gain of three. Our next telecast on the CFL 77 will be at the Olympic Stadium in Montreal with Jack Goda, the new head coach of the Calgary Stampeders, bringing his team in against Marv Levy's Montreal Alouette. July 26th, right here. Don, that'll be my first time to see that Olympic Stadium completely finished. I was there before it was finished, but because of the coaching job last year, I didn't have a chance to get down for the Olympics and didn't see the, the final games down there. Now, we had four games with near-capacity crowds, a magnificent view for football last year. Here's McGraw getting two, maybe three, as he's taken down by Pat Donnelly, number 59. That Hamilton defensive end looking good tonight. Make it a gain of three. It's going to be second down and seven to come with 8.40. The time now, a very critical factor for the Toronto Argonauts. Well, Rick Asada was kidding this morning. He says, Shaw just keeps taking the Americans from the offense and putting them on defense. And as we know, they're starting nine imports on that defense out there. And certainly they should have themselves a pretty good football game. Well, Franklin went for a real run out there. They threw the pass in his area, but he was a good five yards offside. But he should learn something from that, though. If he completed the pass, they would have got second down over again.